G'day, Ad. Welcome back to 2023. It's AOS Coach, the first live stream since in the new season, in the new General Handbook 2022. It's all about Galatian champions. And I'm here with Dom, aka Troghammer, to talk about the new Gloom Spike Gits book. Yes, it's the same cover basically as the old book, <laughs> but we have new rules. It's exciting. Uh, I'm back and uh, I'm excited to talk about this book, like a legitimately excited. It's been 18 months since we've had grand strategies and battle tactics and we feel like an, a third edition book, but we're here, Dom. Welcome, g'day, share who you are and let's get into the good stuff that is the loon bosses and the trogs and the spiders and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really looking forward to it. Ex excited to be invited on today. So yes, yeah, so thanks for asking me to come on. Um, so yeah, nice to meet you. I'm I'm, I'm Dom. So I'm a UK, UK based AOS player. Pl played Trogs for pretty much the majority of last GHB. And yeah, j j just as I'm sure everyone tuning in is re really excited about a new Gits book. Plenty to get stuck into. Some really exciting changes. So looking forward to chatting about it more today. Yeah, so Dom, you have done incredibly well in the previous seasons. You were four, four and uh, four and one, I believe five and oh. I was trying to get the TSN network. Yeah, that's right. St the stats weren't working, so I couldn't validate. But you've done incredibly well with the gits, despite all the challenges in the in, in the last couple of seasons. So I thought, while we haven't had a good chance to get a you know a solid reps to get a solid opinion just yet, as experienced gits players, I've been playing gits since two thousand and nineteen. Let's get into it. What do we like? What's changed? How do we think about the book? And what do our list start looking like? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P -p pushed them around plenty of tournaments last season, and yeah, there's some there's some there's some really good changes actually. Yeah, it's 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 looking it's looking good. Let's let's start at the start, like really quickly for someone. Let's say you know Santa Claus came down your chimney and they brought you the Squiggle Lounge box, or they got you some gits for Christmas, and um, you maybe you haven't played the old gits. Give me a, a little bit of a flavor of what old gits or what is the gits book about? You know, what are they good at? What's the army all about? You know, what's your your summary if I was at that games workshop store looking to pick up the box? Yeah, I like it. So I think like if, if I was going to describe, try and describe gits to someone, um, I, I would essentially say like if, if you're looking for an army that's got this huge variation and really an army that can take essentially three or four books and find a way to put them into one i, th I, th I think that's where it gets really comes in I, th I think the old book probably pushed you more towards a single build like whether it was a pure trog list or pure squig list or pure uh, grot list and there was all those jokes about keyword bingo how, how nothing interacted really and everything sat incredibly separate but i think the new gets books really came away from that so, so if you're really looking for like I always call them like fantasy style armies. So like when you look on the table, you've got like cavalry, you've got like melee units, you've got wizards, you've got teleports, you've got deep strikes. Like the, I think the, the new Gits book especially has has all of that. So to me, it really looks like a proper fantasy army on the table. So if you're looking for a bit of everything and also a bit of high risk, high reward as well, I think the Gits books kept some of that, which is what I think was the beauty of the last book, especially. You know, you couldn't cast a spell half the time about risking D3 mortal wound in one of your one of your own wizards. Um, and it, it, it's, it's kept some of that fun stuff as well. Um, so I think whether you're a fun player, competitive player, or someone looking for a real mixed arms, I think the new Gits book takes all the boxes. Yeah, it's actually funny you talk about the mixed arms because it's one of the things that Games Workshop annoyed the shit out of me. Like they bring out those like uh, the Christmas boxes, the start collecting, yeah. they bring out like they bring out these boxes and they were all combination. It was like squigs and trogs or grots and trogs. It was just this and the army never worked that way. It was always in the old book, it really rewarded you to go heavy trogs. Yeah, you couldn't. You could, you could always mix things around, but as you said, the keywords and the shenanigans and the interactions didn't really work. That's a big change that I've noticed as we've come to the new book. It's less about the common, uh, less about the keywords, and it's more about, as you said, the old fantasy battles, orcs and goblins book, which was you would see spiders and fanatics and a, a giant, and you would see uh, a chariot, and you'd see wolf riders, and you would see a yeah. real mixture of the hordes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think in the old book, when when if you were trying to write a mixed arms list, you would end up with almost like two separate 1,000 point armies. You'd have like a couple of unit boing grots who maybe had one little buff piece and then and none of it interacted. But they've de they've definitely came away with that. Like some of the and then obviously we'll come on to talk about it. But some of the best buff buffs that I see in this book tend to be just gloom spike gets keyword locked, which is very reassuring. So you can give your trogs and your spiders plus one attack without just having to pick or choose from from each other. So yeah. 
So it's it's in a good place. I think we're going to see some really exciting new lists on the table and a real variation as well, which is always yeah. positive, I think. Uh, looking at how the community has been making their lists, it's been great. Um, traditionally, yeah. you would see, as you said, uh, trogs would be 2,000 points of trogs. Or as I used to say back in the day, 70% should be focused on one type of build and then maybe 30%, like have some, I don't know, squigs or some grots to kind of screen your trogs. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. you want to have some some trogs at the back of your, your gits hoard to kind of vomit over them, whatever it might be. Yeah. But there's now some real good soup. There's some really good combinations. And it's exciting to see, like, you know, Scragroth the Loon King is now not key, locked to abilities only if your general is the Gloom Spike yeah. Pits. The yeah. Loon Shrine changing. The Loon Shrine now allowing you to regenerate outside of just some of those core units. Yeah, that, 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 that's a huge change. Yeah, the, the, the Loon Shrine is one of the biggest changes, actually. And I think one of, one of the most exciting ones. Because, yeah, because the old regen was obviously it was keyword locked. So you, you gen, if your general was a damn called Trog boss, you could bring about your Trogs. But in, in my, my list was really, I, I used to have a couple of cheap throwaway screens, which was a unit of Spider Riders and a unit of Ripper Snarl Fangs. But once I died, they were gone. Whereas the, if I could bring them back, even as a unit of three, that, that you feel much more comfortable throwing those units away early to, sc to score battle tactics if you know you're going to bring them back. And and even even the buffs that you're getting from some of the sub factions now, where you can re-roll or bring back, you can do two four re-rolls if you want. You can really afford now to trade well with this book, I think, and throw units away. Whereas you had to be a bit more protective, I think, in the last book, and it was quite difficult to trade well. It's one of the most biggest biggest difficulties with it. But yeah, in a in a really good place, I think now. Do you think the play styles change? Like when I look at this book and Beast of Chaos that came out at the same time, Beast yeah. of Chaos, it's funny. A lot of people got really angry at Beast of Chaos at first. And I kept saying, stop, play style has changed. Stop putting your old list into the new book because you're going to be over a thousand points now. That play style changed. Has Git stayed the same? Has it changed? Or is it now just the fact that the combination of units you bring to the table is changing the way you look at the game? Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. I think whenever a new book comes out or, or a new GHB, people always fall into that trap of look. Because I remember when the, what, the other faction I played Slayers, and I remember when the new book for Slayers came out, looking at that and thinking my old army just doesn't work the same anymore. And people start saying it's not as good, but actually you do just have to adapt how you play. Um, and on, on Beast of Chaos, I played, my, I played it with one of my friends, Charlie, in a tournament the other weekend. And we were joking because the book dropped as pretty much as we were playing and his, his list went from 2,000 points to about four and a half thousand so I was suddenly playing what was a four and a half thousand list which felt a bit unfair but I obviously didn't have any of the changes but um but yeah I, I think I think it depends really I, th I think the, the the way my list used to run my list from the old book really it, it was a trog castle so you had you had your you had your HQ which was your damn called trog boss who was giving out your re-roll and ones you had your you had your marsh crawler slog off who made the whole army plus one to hit. So all my hammer units were twos roll and ones. And all I had to do was spend one CP so I could all defend them. So it was a prop, proper castle build. Um, the later version of it, I brought the Skitter Strand in because he became really cheap and he was a deep strike. So it was sort of a dub, double layer of screens, castle, hit really hard, shuffled around. And I, I still think that build still exists in this book. But I think what this book's now given you is it's given you the ability to actually completely change that playstyle and have multiple playstyles. I think that I think there's a squig alpha list floating around in there where you can really just be a one drop squig list and put, give away first and then push up the board and have hordes of squigs of people. You, you can still do a trog castle where you can effectively, I'll, I'll talk through a list later on, but you can effectively get your army on minus three to hit. And there's not going to be many armies in the book that are going to be used to being minus one to hit in melee because usually when you go to kill a unit you're used to hitting on twos because you're going to all out attack but if you can't do that suddenly what your opponent's expecting to achieve with battle types of things will dramatically change and then you've got your spiders who i also think although m maybe there's the slightly less one that people have been excited about the more you dig into their rules actually there's some really interesting combos in there and they suddenly start to feel a bit cruel cruel boy-esque where there's ways of really buffing mortals and fishing for fives and sixes so so it's sort of a long way of saying I think there's lots of play styles in the book now and you can really adapt it to how you want it. But when I think of sort of where I'm going to take it, I think it'll still essentially be a castle because that's how I like to play. But I've now got options to step out and, and do damage through boing grots and squig hoppers by eyeing them into the trogs as well. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because um, my primary armies, I've got almost like a massive IKEA case full of Gloom Spite or the, sorry, the, the Moon Clan, they're now called the yeah. Moon Clan kind of grots as well as squigs. So 
when I was building my list, I already had the 36 squig herd. I already yeah. had like, you know, 25 boing grot bounders and I've yeah. got a lot of squig. I've got two colossal squigs and a squig god. Nice. I've got the whole range. <laughs> yeah. When I look at like my old list, if I took my old uh, stabbers type of list, I used to run like 140, 160 stabbers. Nice. That list hasn't really changed and yeah. I could run it as it was. Um, my squig list, um, outside of obviously the questionable forge world models, the, the list hasn't really changed. So I could run my old style and be very happy with it. Yeah. Or as you mentioned, I'm now looking over the fence and going, Ooh, I like those fell water. I, I want to get that, um, armor modification abilities from them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious about them or, Hey, now the trogs are really a, a hammer and an anvil because they heal a lot more. Yeah. I'm now really interested. And I think what people have said in the chat, ooh, Scragrot, i got to get Scragrot in my yeah. list regardless of what army I'm running. So yeah. I think there's a lot of, but by the way, as as Nate's also pointed out, we are pre-FAQ when we're talking here. So we don't know yeah, if any points are going to change. Like the web spinner shaman's like 65 points. Like that is, that is a bargain. Yeah, um, definitely. The, yeah. The squeak herd, some people might argue, are a little bit too cheap. Scragrot is a little bit too cheap. So let's see what happens after the errata and let's see if anything changes before you get super excited and buy, as Nate's mentioned, oh, sorry, sorry, as Forster said, Gobba Palooza, because yeah. that one that one surprised yeah. me. Um, and we'll get into like all the good stuff in a minute, but the Gobba Palooza not being a unique and being able to stack its abilities, I think has to change it has to change yeah I'll, i would assume so I, i'm i'm sort of i'm working on the assumption that the gobba palooza will be unique and like to typically when i'm writing lists i'm 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 including just one in there because otherwise yeah 145 points for what is effectively a, a 15 wounds two cast wizard with a four at watch for the first turn and which just gives out rend by just pointing and clicking and then can then stop your opponent issuing cp and make your whole army minus one to hit in a bubble is yeah, it, it, it feels like it's going to, and, and as, as, as Stuart Hodges says, got a five at ward turn two and then a six up onwards. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I'm at minimum. Uh, look, at minimum, I think it'll be um, that they can't stack. I think yeah. if the Gobba Palooza yeah. doesn't stack, so if you have two Gobba Paloozas, that's cool. But getting like 40 shooters who are doing 80 shots at red minus yeah. two because you've got two Gobba Paloozas doing a automatic ability yeah. is like, oh. Yeah, for sure. That has to change. <laughs> and there's some there's some really good spells in the Gitsbook now as well, which I know we'll come on talking about, but like the, the spell lore is really strong. So you effectively giving each of those Gobba Paloozas one, one of the, you know, whether it's Itchy Nuisance to Fight Last or a Teleport, it just it, it because, and, and they rally on the four up is the other thing as well. So you you pick, you pick the ones you're not fussed about, and then you leave the ones you care about, and you just ride them back. So yeah, and I think they come back from the loon shrine as well. And they come back from loon shrine on the four up, possibly re-rolling if you've got king gets. <laughs> so it's it's all it's all quite crazy, and obviously you can just return the three that you care about most, which is probably going to be the Ren's guy and the two spellcasters probably for for most lists. Um, yeah. So yeah. Look, what I'm saying to you folks is if you don't already own a Gobapalooza, don't go out and buy seven of them. Just yeah. hold that for the FAQ yeah. uh, because there are some things where I, I don't think intentionally they wanted you to stack the Gobapalooza. But uh, for example, right? But um, look, overall, it's a really good book. I'm excited about the change. I'm happy not only with the grand strategies and the battle tactics. I'm also happy just the, the army seems to work the way I wanted it to work. One of my biggest gripes as a... Um, so when I started... I actually started as a squeak player and as a competitive squeak player at the time, it was really frustrating about the random movement. I would do everything possibly in my army, but the random movement often stopped me from doing what I wanted it to do. I'll never forget, you know, doing some really good combinations. And then my, my loon boss on mango squeak would roll a five on its move. Yeah. It just like hinders literally everything. Now yeah. it's still got the, the randomness, but it's less swingy. And I think for me, that gets me excited with the squigs again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I, I play I was I played a squig list for about a month before Christmas and it, it was it was and that that's what I found really difficult. It was that reliability and you know, you, you can know all there is to know about the damage output of a unit of ten point got bounders, but if you don't know if they're gonna move 
like you know 12 inches or two inches it's incredibly difficult to plan for battle tactics if you really and of course you can make them run in charge to make it a bit more reliable and stuff but but yeah I, I think i think squigs needed at least to have a base movement so as a player especially at competitive level you, you can at least have an idea of where, you, where you're going to get to if you're going to pick a battle tactic or whatever i'm going to be at least here rather than think i could be two inches forward or i could be 12 <laughs> makes yeah. it incre incredibly difficult so yeah really really good glow up it was always really funny, actually. And I want to get to the rules in a second. But I want to share a story. And it was, I, I found this probably maybe more than you. I'd rock up to the, the gaming table and you always have that couple of minutes in. It's like, what does your army do? And I'm like, look, my army could move 24 inches. Yeah. It could move four. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to find out very soon. And it was always <laughs> that randomness that was really hard to plan. But yeah. look, I think generally we've talked a lot about, there's a lot of glow ups. Um, today's show is definitely going to be focused more on the spider and the trog side. Though yeah. folks, we will talk about the others. And in two weeks time, I've also got another discussion where we'll focus more on the moon clan and on the, um, the, the, the squigs purely because it's such a deep book and such a rich, rich book. We could be here forever. And I think Dom has to go to sleep at some point as much as I would enjoy that. As much as I would enjoy that discussion. <laughs> yeah, no good. I'll probably just be writing lists anyways till like 2 a.m. to be honest. So I wouldn't worry. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. My list changes know, all the time. Yeah, and for so. the first time ever, I've dropped the loon boss from my list and it hurts me. It was like I never <laughs> left home, even even yeah. with uh yeah. But all right, let's bring up the rules and let's actually talk a little bit about the army and the first one is that there's been a massive change to the bad moon. The bad moon used to start off on the table edge and it may come on the board from turn two. May. There's been times where I've played this and I, the moon hasn't come on till turn four. Yeah. It's been the worst. Tom, <laughs> I did the preview in the past. I want to hear your thoughts and don't read, don't read the screen. But when you think about the bad moon, do you plan for it? How do you think about it? What do you want to tap into? We'll get into the rules in a second on what the actual bad moon does, but give me your thoughts on on how it all works. Yeah, for sure. So, so I think n now I'll, I'll certainly be planning for it a lot more. In in, in the last book, you, you could expect that it should come on to turn two or three, because and I've had games as well. I've I've rolled three ones in a row, and the moon, the moon's never never appeared. <laughs> um, I I went there with Gitz only gets only tournament in london and my, my friend toby brought spiders and the whole point of the list was to have the moon and there was one game he played the moon never turned up um so 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 you you really couldn't you didn't use to plan for the moon i think in the old book but it, it would be him i think in a bit so to, when, I, when i was deploying my army i deployed just off center to one corner so i knew that once it was on my wizards were getting plus one to cast my i was getting the free cp all those old buffs and obviously then we had that glow up about six months in to last year where the shrine started counting as, as, a, as a moon bubble um and, and i think though what that sort of forced you to do was to try not to leave the shrine much especially in the armies that i was running those trog castles i wanted to be near the shrine because i wanted to be holy even 12 of it for the battle shock community which obviously now gone sadly but for all the plus one save on the trogs all that sort of thing whereas whereas what we've got now is we know for a fact the moon's going to start on the board and and and, and that 100 percent changes changes my thinking so so when i'm deploying i'm probably typically going to be setting myself off to one side if i if, I, if i'm running scrag rot um i'll for sure be trying to keep everyone holy than 12 of him um but the, the bulk of my army i'd be putting in that bottom left quarter if that's where i was going to start i'd certainly have my wizards there i'd have i'd, I'd have my general there. obviously they're, they're not getting that plus one cast anymore they're not getting that free cp but like you, you if you've got a dank old trog boss he's going to get plus one save from, from being under the moon so i i'm definitely going to start playing into it more but I think probably what where I think it's even more important now is is the battle tactic side of things. So 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 that where Gitz I found really struggle. I used to joke all the time that I would give anything just for two battle tactics, <laughs> um, because it used to have to be so brave with Trog armies and most Gitz armies and battle tactic choices because they're outside of against the odds last edition there wasn't there was no bankers. Yeah, you, you had to work hard for all the battle tactics. Whereas now we've got some that look really promising. So actually being able to to think about where the moon's going to go and where you want it and when is actually is actually going to be really powerful now to score those battle tactics and obviously we've then got the likes of scrag Rot, who can give out a moon bubble we've got the malevent moon endless spell um so, so the whole thing has, has just got a much more reliable glow up but but what it's really going to help with is being able to leave the shrine which i'm quite excited for i don't feel like my castle army needs to hug the shrine anymore i can have a little wander up the board with scrag Rot in support or just use scrag Rot's ability to get it in the middle of get it in the middle of the board um and once it's in that middle What's even more exciting, I think, is it might stick around for longer. Um, because you know once it's in the middle, you're either rolling that six or you're rolling that two to five and it's moving or it's disappearing. 
Whereas now, at worst, it goes one. But actually, you're as likely to roll a one to three as you are to roll a four up. So there's a good chance you can get it in the middle of the board turn two and keep, and keep it there for a couple of turns. Um, so so yeah, so it, it it's got it's got a lot better now. And I think as Gits players, we can we can we can play into it rather than just think of it as a, as a positive if it happens to turn up eventually and be in the be in the right spot. Yeah, the old the old bad moon. It was always a nice to have ability. It was never yeah. until until that latest like errata where the shrine also gave out the buff. It was something that I never played around. It was like, look, it, when it happens, it happens. If it does happen, I'll get this benefit and this benefit. But for most of the time, it was always about the things that I could control, which was you know command uh, command points, random abilities, things like that. Yeah. But now when I look at this rule, so just for anyone who hasn't read the, the text yet, basically you pick one of the quarters on the battlefield. So you can see that there's some markups here. You pick a, a quarter and the bad moon starts here. Uh, by the way, do you have a bad moon token and what are you using to represent the bad moon? I do, actually, I do. I'm, I'm going to, so one of my one of my club mates, um, Dave Carter, I can't remember what his name is on, on Twitter, but he, um, he actually designed a bad moon marker that I use and it's brilliant. It, 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 it looks like a gaming table. And I've seen got, that. I've got, seen that. I've, I've seen it. It's got I a little I, yellow moon that moves I think across. I, I think I saw it on Colts or one of the three. Like, like my mini factory or what? I'm sure I saw that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like ninety percent sure he's put it on there now, so anyone can go and download it. But it's brilliant, and he painted that up for me. And essentially, you get a little moon with a magnet, and you move it across the board. It's got little loons right on there, so I, I I use that, and it's great. And I think yeah, having the moon marker is is super helpful. Um. But both for you and your opponent, really, because there's obviously a lot of rules in there for them to remember. And if they if they know they're about to walk into an army wide plus one save of trogs, that's actually quite important for them to know as well. Um, yeah. Versus if it's off in one corner and you know you've got a couple of units that are a bit weaker. So, I uh, I have a little blood bowl token that um, has the bad moon yes. side on it from from fantasy days. I think my favorite one though is back in the day I saw a guy from New Zealand. I think it was Sean had a helium balloon. He just like yeah. did a little <laughs> moon face on it and like it. literally moves it over yeah. the table. So anyway, just back back to the moon. Uh, moon starts on a quarter of the battlefield and basically yep. at the start of every turn you roll a dice on a roll of one to three. It doesn't move on a roll of four to six. It moves one spot. So you can see it goes from one quadrant to the center to the other quadrant and then off the battlefield uh, when it is in the quadrant it benefits the units in those four squares when it's in the center of the board it affects everybody obviously so basically the moon is kind of moving over the battlefield um Scragrot does have a once per game ability as well that can kind of interact with that. So when it gets onto the center of the battlefield, you could use Scragrot's ability to hold it as a one, two, or three. So then you receive a, a board wide benefit for for a lot longer. So uh, and I've seen already a lot of people in the chat going Scragrot's an auto include. Scragrot's an auto include. He's a great caster. Uh, knows yeah. the entire spell law. Gives you a bad moon or a buff as well, and um, he's just. I mean, he did lose his shooting attack, which made me cry just a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah, that was a shame. Yeah, but no, I agree. I, I think Scragrot is is the is as close to an auto include I think as you get as you get in the book. Like, and he's got the free CP as well. And I I do think Gits are going to be quite a CP hungry army now. I'm expecting with like battle shock and trying to get things hitting on twos and and that sort of thing. And I think the other thing when we think about the moon is you're gonna you're gonna really be able to ma manipulate it based on the battle plan and, and what you're playing. So, so if, you, if you're playing an army that does not want to be in combat with you, and like think, if you think about your Lumineth Helon list who just want to sit back and pick you off, you can you can afford to just chance that four up. Uh, but if you're against an alpha list, maybe you want to get the moon on the middle straight away. Um, so you want to bring Scragrot in so you can just get stuck into combat and stop bringing their damage output down. So so, so I'm, I'm really excited about the ways you can manipulate this now um, and, and just the chance of having it around. and and. The, the the buffs are the buffs are, 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 are incredibly strong. I mean, a four up rally is is is, ne is never any, and never anything to sniff at. And then oh, the plus one save. We'll get to that in a second. We'll pause there. Yeah. Pause that. But uh, Stu, Stu in the comments, very good point as well. It happens in a priority. So uh, yeah. it happens before priority, sorry. So you know uh, if you want to give it away, if you want to keep it. So it helps you with that decision a little bit more. And just really quickly, MES, um, I'm saying that the, the Gobble Palooza either needs to be unique or yeah. shouldn't stack. You shouldn't be able to get yeah. two stacks on a unit and get like minus two or minus three on... Otherwise, it's going to blow out the points of shooters and other units. So I think the intention was never to stack. But but we are talking about the abilities. Now I want to get them on screen, Adom. So cool. 
see, we talked earlier, we, we started talking about some of the benefits, right? So we'll talk under the light of the bad moon, just while we're on this tangent. So when units are affected under the light of the bad moon, depending if your moon clan, your squigs, your trogoth, or your spiders, you will receive a benefit. Now let you get going. Keep going. Cool, brilliant. Yeah, so 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 the first the first one there is with is essentially about ra ra rallying. So so obviously you can you can issue a command start of the hero phase where you can look to rally units. So roll number of dice equals the number of missing models from that unit. And normally on a six they come back, um, but the ability to do it on a four up is 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 incredibly powerful. Um, and this is obviously a buff that was saw towards the back end of of last GHB. Um, but the fact that they've kept this as Moon Clan keywords. Bring, brings in so much of the gets book like you've got your squigs are in there obviously you can't do it on a squig hurt sadly because i can't benefit receive cp but like your hoppers can do it your bounders can do it your cobber pollute your cobber palooza can do it your snufflers can do it um just, just an incredibly strong strong ability and when i'm when i'm thinking about on my my, my spider and trog list that we're talking about today there's, there's a good chance in there somewhere you're probably going to have a moon clan unit too whether, whether it's a screen whether it's shooters like you've said like you've already alluded to so you can reach out and affect your opponent early with that extra rend. So the ability to bring those back on a four up is is, is incredibly powerful. Um so so all, all around just 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 a brilliant ability. And then and then you've got the, the run and charge on squigs is is also again just 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 super strong. Um and, and that's something that when I was briefly running squigs last edition that, that, that was probably the, the, the strongest benefit I found from the moon personally was once that was in the middle of the board, I knew it was like it was go time with the squigs because you could, and especially now when we think about the random movement, actually if you think about a unit of hoppers, 10 plus a run plus an extra six, if you, if you auto run them six, you know suddenly you've got a unit of hoppers that's definitely going 16. So you've got qu quite frightening board control actually um, when you bring that in. And then the plus one save on Trogs was already good. And I, I remember playing them pre plus one save and post plus one save. That felt like a big difference, more than I think I expected it to actually, um, picking them up pre and post. I was actually quite shocked how much more survival plus one save actually actually makes you. Um, but now we're effectively running plus two save Trogs because now we're on a four up save and now we're controlling the moon better and we're putting it where we want it. So Rockets on a three up five up um, is, is, is pretty, it's pretty scary. And especially when you can say they're four wins each and they're healing lots, which obviously we'll come on to later. And they're but, automatically yeah. healing. They used to be on, yes. like, was it a three up? They would heal. Now assistant yeah. auto heal. And there's more heal shenanigans. While yeah. you were talking, I was just fact checking something. And because um, I always get nervous with fanatics. Fanatics is one of those units <laughs> that always, always lost on the keyword bingo. Like they yeah. would lose the moon clan. They never had moon clans. So they never got the reroll ones to hit in the old book. Now you can rally fanatics on a four up. That's gold. I yeah, just checked it. It's the Mugen keyword. That's amazing. Yeah, let's let's is, go. It is crazy. Te teleport a unit of, of shooters with some fanatics in, shoot off a screen, dump them out, send them in, kill some stuff, and then bring them back. It's all <laughs> there's, there, there's lots, lots of exciting, exciting players in that now. And then the, the only one I haven't touched on yet is, is, is the spider one, um, which is which is which is uh, which is powerful but i think i think that the 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 downside to the spider one really is a lot of the abilities now have lent more into having to roll a six rather than it being on the five but which is a bit of a shame but but you, you know you're never going to grumble at um at getting plus one to, to be able to to get mortal wounds on a five and seven six up so all yeah, very good like the spider venom has always been a great ability. It's always just been some other weaknesses in the spider builds. But I think yeah. even when I looked at my my army back in the day, um, I always was tempted to buy like an like a, a an Arachnarok having it in my army, like having this absolute anvil because you can get, you know, some really good spells, some really good artifacts, and even like yeah. some good command traits that you can have. So even even if you built a non-Spider Fang army, you didn't want to run, you know, the Spider Riders, um, having a Spider Fang unit like an Arachnarok, and there's some good abilities, like the Skitter Strand yeah. has had a bit of a glow up. Um, there's some good things in yeah. that. But yes, to your point, there are some ways to get like, three mortal wounds off spider venom or there are you know uh, multiply them by double there's a there's some cool abilities but the interaction with the underlight of the bad moon doesn't work which was a bit disappointing but i can also see why they wouldn't want it to work that way yeah yeah m m maybe it becomes a bit maybe it maybe it becomes almost too powerful which is a strange thing to say about spiders but they are only 90 points so if you've got 10 attacks running around at 90 points and suddenly they're doing two mortals on fives and six on threes and maybe it does feel a bit a bit overpowered but yeah but no i've, I've always I've, I've typically used to run uh spider riders as screens and, and take the big deep strike in one um for, for, for a bit of board control 
Um, but yeah, but I, I think Spider Rides is, is still a really good screen. They cover a lot of board for 90 points, and especially now you mm. can bring them back um, e- even better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and actually, it, that's a good point because the um, Ripper Snarl Fangs went up in points. And they're now that type of unit where I'm not quite interested in them anymore because they gained some extra, they gained extra wounds and they're now at 110 points. So they're competing now with the block of stabbers and shooters at like 125. And I'm like, now that Spider Riders are, are five for what 90 odd points, and That's I just yeah. want a cheap, a cheap screen that I could run forward and could take the damage if I played like Iron Jaws. Yeah. Maybe they now feel that role that I used Ripper Snarl Fang for. Yeah, for sure, I, I, and I think they play that role really well. When when you when you actually spread that unit of five out on the board, it, it's it's you, yeah, it it covers a lot of grounds. And if you're if you're against a non melee army, you can use them to protect flanks and like push your fells and your rockets up front. Versus your iron jaws, as you've just alluded to, you, you're happy to 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 let a more a more crusher charge into ten spider riders if you get a fight over the top with six rockets. So you can you can use them to trade. Um, um, super, super effectively, and, and obviously, I, I saw a comment about the flinger pop up as well. I, I think, I think the flinger, the flinger shot is actually is in, in against some armies will be incredibly effective. I think it's a thirty six inch range down, and, and and if you if you put the palooza on it and give it minus one rends you, into a unit of twenty, you can have twenty shots at twos and threes minus one one, and you can you can just be li- lifting one wound models. So so that even the flinger, I think now when you look at him against certain armies, he's gonna. He's gonna be able to put some work in. The Gobba Palooza just makes everything better. Everything, like, everything better. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's yeah. no wonder it's sold out. And I, when I look at yeah. the Facebook buy and sells, it's like I want a Gobba Palooza, and I'm like, yeah, good luck yeah. to you. Good luck to you. Yeah, no, I know. I luckily Nathan Prescott, who I, I told me he had seven. I don't know if he was joking, but um, but he he, he kindly sent me one, so I've officially got a hold of a Gobba Palooza now. So, yeah. I, I have mine from the olden days, so I'm yeah, gonna... nice. You're an original. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm OG. Yeah, All yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the other rules. So I'm going to skip Giddish hordes because I've actually got the rules coming up. They're the new sub factions, and just as an FYI, there are two new sub factions. Very, very cool. We'll talk about them in a minute. But you've also got two heroic actions and two monstrous rampages that are again keyword dependent, right? So yeah. your heroic actions. There's one for Moon Clan. There's one for Dankhold. Any thoughts? Do you see yourself using either of these uh, heroic actions compared to your generic ones? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the the the, the Beck and the Lunatic Hordes one is is probably the one that jumps out as the most powerful. I, I, I typically find like I, I, I'm a huge fan of Rally, especially I, I would typically use it on rockets. If even if I'd lost two, if I had a CP spare, I would just chance it because the ability to bring back like a four wound model just by rolling the dice is incredibly powerful. But as, as I think we touched on before, we are. I think we are going to see more mixed mixed arm, arms lists now, um, and because of that, I'm expecting that even within trog lists, you might have a couple of grot units plus a unit of squigs. Those grots might be screens, but but the ability to not have to roll to get that CP to spend on the rally in the first place and just do it and do it on three units, all of which will will hopefully be if you've positioned yourself right rallying on the four up, um, is. It's, it's remarkable, <laughs> uh, t- to be honest. So, so, so that that one is is super powerful, and I think the key thing there is just making sure you've got your buffs in the right place, like you've got Scraggy covering all the units that you're going to want to rally. Um, I'm also a huge fan of, of of Wade and Smash, to be honest. And I think I think that typically how I, how I'm planning on constructing that Trog boss is he's going to be survivable because I'm in the one for my for my Grand Strat, and I'm, he's probably going to be like a 12 or 14 wound model. Um, with a four a four ward save is, is typically the build that I'm going to be going for with him. So I'm going to feel a lot more braver in just pushing him into combat with my rock guts just to do a bit of extra damage um, to help them with that buffs and babysit them a bit. But but the ability really to, to shift six inches and, and maybe tag something in combat um, is, 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 is really good. And I actually think where this becomes an even more powerful is is you, you do this after your opponent has picked their, say, battle tactic, um, I'll pick their, you know, they've a battle attack, they've done their heroic action, and maybe their battle attack was to go and kill something. Then suddenly you pile six inches into that thing and target in combat. I think there's going to be some some really nice counter plays with this as well, um, to actually shut stuff down as well as just dish out mortal wounds to things. So I like I like them both. 
both of them are good they obviously yeah. both situational the beckon of the lunatic hordes obviously you've got to have multiple uh moon clan yeah. or at least you've got to benefit that way uh i like wade and smash but it's situational like it doesn't yeah. it, it doesn't take over from the generic ones but if i'd find myself with my dank hold trog boss in combat because it has to start within three yeah. um whether it's your turn or my turn i think there's a lot of cool things you could possibly do with it but it's Got obviously that. situational um really yeah. quickly as well i just want to call out the web spinner shaman i think in my in my personal opinion um is a uh, a complete oversight i think it yeah. definitely needed the hero keyword i would not be surprised if it's eroded pretty quickly to get the hero keyword hope so other... yeah I'm, I'm definitely expecting that yeah. And and I gotta ask, Mike has asked, um, do stabbers make it into your list and what happens to Mad Max? <laughs> Mad Max, yeah. Um I'm, I'm so 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 Mad Max was what I named my Mad Cap Shaman. Um and I've I really need to come away from that because I, I there's been a few times I've played people now and I've said Max is casting this and people are like, Who's Max? And I'm like, sorry, it's it's, it's the Mad Cap. So naming your heroes can actually can actually be a bit of a trap. Um yeah, I've, I've, I've got a bad feeling Max is going to struggle now. Purely, I'm, well, I guess we might come on this later, but purely because his Freddy the Fungoid, as, as, as I'll name him, is now invisible outside of 12. It's So it's hard now to argue that someone being invisible outside of 12 isn't worth an extra 20 points. Um, so so I, I feel like Ma Ma Max may be less seen, and Fungoids can now take Moonface Moment, which they didn't used to be able to, which is a big, big look for them as well. Um, and I, I think I'd probably lean more into shooters for my trog list personally. Um, than stabbers um i think stabbers ha have, certainly have a place because if you run a block of 40 you can test objectives from nine which is incredibly powerful um but the reason i like shooters is because one of the things that my trog list of old lacked was that ability to to reach out and affect my opponent turn one even if it's just shooting a screen just just your opponent knowing that you can you can affect them turn one is quite powerful um and i had a lot of players stood across from me and said oh we're 18 inches away you can't get you can't really get me now and it was so easy for them to give away first turn but if they know actually you can dump a unit of 40 shooters you know teleport them within 20 of a key hero and they can lift him then um then i think that's actually quite a powerful threat to have exactly with minus one rend gobba palooza again we, we should we should take note of how many times we say gobba palooza during, <laughs> during this interview i think it's gonna be a lot but um but yeah i think i think we'll we'll be seeing grots in my lists for sure as a screen yeah and you know yeah. despite all the powerfulness and the excitement that we have as four stores i mentioned one of our biggest weaknesses is going to be the horror ghast anything that yeah. can impact us within battle shock and i know um because again i mentioned i play a lot of moon clan one of the things that i've had to go out and do and go by the old um old scar stick model i had one i've converted it out onto a, a more crusher but yeah. i've had to go out by another one because it has a really cool ability to help with battle shock because i do still like running a block of 60 and a unit of 40 stabbers yeah um, if a horror gas comes in i need reliable ways to get rid of it because my bravery is low and while rally can certainly help i've still got to survive until, until i can use rally so watch out for yeah. horror gas watch out for any bravery modification and find a, a consistent strong wizard where possible yeah yeah totally agree yeah horror gas is going to be it's going to be tough and, and anything that does area of effect or aoe chip damage is going to be difficult if, if you know if, if you lose one trog from every trog unit um suddenly you're taking a battle shock test for every single one of them and if you roll a six on one of them and two of them run away what what a nightmare to, to, to lose three trog offs to battle shock so yeah but de dealing with bravery debuffs is going to be I would say the biggest challenge of this of this book, having lost it from the from the shrine. And I will bring up Gobba Palooza though in a negative way. One of the things that it used to have was a battle shock immunity ability. That's no longer there. So outside yeah. of inspiring presence, the Loon Shrine doesn't give you in, uh, a battle shock, uh, shock immunity either. So you are really susceptible to running away. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Maybe reconsider if you reinforce or double reinforce your units. Maybe you're better off running multiple small units just because if this hap does happen to happen, then we could be in trouble because we don't have a lot of strong casters. We've got some good casters um, and, and they're not reliable, consistent ways to get rid of things like the horror gas. So keep, keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I think, I think it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how the battle shock um, side of things. And also I think people shouldn't be afraid to come in at 1950 on points and just, and just, just almost guarantee a triumph <laughs> just to, to stop, to stop battle shock as well. So 
bingo. My sons yeah. of Behemoth are always like, I'm comfortable running 1920, 1930, yeah. because I want that plus one to wound triumph. Yeah. For Gits, um, Gits, I think it's the exact same thing, but I want the Battleshock immunity one because it's not a Battleshock test. It's completely yeah. different. So I can use it with Inspiring Presence or if I'm stopped uh, doing it with Horrorgast, I can do it instead of. So yeah, exactly. don't, be, yeah. don't be afraid. Don't buy an endless spell for the sake of buying an endless spell get the triumph yeah for sure yeah i agree talk to me about the two monstrous rampages so we've got one for our spiders and we have one for our squigs do you like either of them yeah so like big big like huge fan of the mangler squig one um the the the, the, fr the threat range on the mangler squigs now is is, is is pretty terrifying when you when you're paired with like a running charge and and the ability to then possibly charge a screen and go and go 3d6 i've wrote a few trog lists where i'm trying to get a mangler squig in because i think what that mangler squig heroic action uh, monstrous action does sorry is it keeps your opponent honest a bit because they can't anymore just just step step their screens up really far because you probably gonna be able to get over the top of them um and, and a, man a mangler squig will, will lift small hq heroes um quite reliably which is which is which is probably where you want it so i i do i do really like that one um the 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 the, the points on the on the loon boss on mangler squig maybe makes that one more difficult especially putting into a trog list but you could certainly find points to put a mangler squig into a trog list if, if you wanted that that sort of throw it away threat that can get over some screens and get into the squishy stuff that maybe trogs would typically struggle to get after um not not as big a fan of, of the arcanot Arcanaut one sadly that that's so so situational um i would love to do it one day <laughs> um but but i'm i'm not even sure when you would pick that over something like raw for example um i mean how, how, how many times are you going to have a, a super super killy hero that you're going to risk rolling a five up or a six on for example versus just roaring it and trying to shut it down getting more killy so not a fan of that one but i like like dom, this big one. dom it's bad it's bad it's it just bad. bad it's bad i'm so i'm sorry i'm it's sorry when I, when I when i looked at it i'm like yeah. unless i've got like seven monsters on the table and that's my last resort for a monstrous rampage it's just incredibly situational and yeah. lord like lord zev I, I agree with you it should have been either a 2d6 or as godly yeah. just mentioned it should have been a three plus I think the likelihood, because you've got to look at it, right? I'm an Arakarok, I'm in combat, I'm within three inches, and it's not a monster. First off, yeah. they're the type of things that I want to do it to, but I can't do it to a monster. Yeah. I roll a dice equal to the, the, the hero's wounds characteristic. So if I'm like up against a, I don't know, an Ogre Tyrant, can't do it. Yeah. I'm up against a, I don't know, a Cities of Sigma wizard idiot. Five wounds. I've got to roll a five plus to make this wizard idiot fight last. Yeah. If it's if it has six wounds, I've got to roll a six. For, for I've got a couple of monstrous rampages, as you said, raw stomp, smash to rubble, uh, Titanic Jewel. Um, I've got all of these options, and you're telling me that I have to roll a six. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you know, you're not never really gonna, you're never gonna pick it. And also the the, the size of the base as well of of these of these spiders is like you've done pretty well if you found yourself in combat with like someone's HQ hero unit so so yeah i think um yeah it's it, it's it's going to be bottom of the pile if if, if if you're running those spiders yeah yeah look yeah. and it, look if if someone pulls it off toby if you pull it off i'll be super happy for you well as well just like <laughs> good on you but it, yeah. it's it's hard because like i could probably just kill that five wound idiot in combat without you striking last like that's not a concern if, if i'm using like again my arachnorock and i'm doing yeah. mortal wounds on sixes with the spider venom yeah yeah, exactly, exactly, and and yeah, the the things you're going to be doing it against, like you say, you're probably going to just be killing anyways in melee, and you probably don't probably don't aren't going to do enough damage back to you that you care enough to completely stop it from fighting. So yeah, a very a very strange one and a shame because I I, I thought there's some great stuff they could have done with that weapon, like they could have stopped pile-ins, could have got so creative with it. So real shame that that's what that's where it fell down. Also, Victor's kind of call that really good one. If the hero has less than six wounds, they're not a threat and you won't ever roll the six. I think that summarizes it really well. I'm not trying to be negative, but like when I look at this, I'm basically saying this is not the the monstrous rampage you use. Use yeah. raw, use stomp, use smash to rubble, use something else 
that that is not this one. Um, yeah. a, sp- a spider's that bad? No, spiders are not that bad. It's just that this monstrous rampage is so situational that you need to find yourself within three inches with a small hero that has under six wounds and the likelihood of you rolling a five or a six. Hell, there's plenty of times where I can't even roll a two on a buddy stomp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. R- 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 Roll's going to win out all the time over this, 100%. R- well, stomp. Stomp, stomp them. Stomp. Or stomp them if yeah, if you're into like a bigger horde army, you don't really care about rolling them. Yeah, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna do this. Yeah, it's a it's a weird one to me. All right, but that that's there we're at. Spiders are not bad. It's just that monstrous rampage is bad. Um, talk about command traits. Um, are there any of these that you really like? Like you're building your list. Um, I assume your general is going to be a trog. Uh, and then we'll put our spider fang hat on in a second. What's your favorite command traits if? Or is it Master of Magic? Is it one of the universals? No, I think, yeah, so I think I, 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 I'm, I'm definitely going to be taking Gits ones now over, over your Master of Magic and things like that. I, I never, I, I never, I didn't actually used to use Master of Magic in the previous one. I used to use the extra, the extra bravery one. So effectively, the Dan called Trogboss was giving out a plus two bravery bubble because he had this wall scroll and he had an extra plus one from the command trait. Um, and it just basically meant that all my trogs were, seven, were on bravery seven. So if one of them died, I wasn't t- wasn't taking the battle shock test. Um, but that that one that one's obviously not around anymore. If if I'm the clammy hand, to be honest, looking at the grot one, it, it's it's incredibly tempting actually to to to, to take that in like a king gets. So, I mean, I think even in trog heavy lists, putting like a fungoid as your general with the clammy hand running a couple of units of shooters with some squigs and then having a Dan called Trog, Trog Boss who's not your general, but has a four up wards. That's actually quite a genuine, legitimate build now just to keep bringing stuff back. But but if, if, if you're going to take a Dan called Trog Boss, which I think I probably will be doing because because of the grand strategy which we'll come on to soon, um, I, I'm going to be torn on these two between Alpha Trog and Loon Skin. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to edge towards Loon Skin. So, so Alpha Trog gives you an extra two wounds and makes you a monster. Which is nothing to sniff at because you can go and do a raw, as we've just discussed. Um, you, you can't do the spider one, but I don't think anyone mind, minds about that. Um, but you can go and do a raw or a stomp, um, and also counts as five on objectives, extra two wounds, more survivable. That is decent. But when you look at loon skin and you're effectively being given a free 100 points um, or, or 85 points, depending on which spell you've, you, you're taking, that's the one that jumps out the, out of the page to me personally, especially if I'm running like a Scragrot or a Wizard, because it doesn't say he's the only one that can cast that endless spell. So you, so you could take, effectively, a, a Mork's Mighty Mushroom or a Scuttletide for free, and Scraggy, Scraggy can push it out. Um, so it's just free real estate for your army. So I think Loon Skin's where I think I'll, I'll probably end up landing. Yeah, for for a trog general, I I would tend to agree. If I was, I would alpha trog is the first one. Loonskin is is good. Um, depending on how the meta goes, mighty mushroom not yet. Although, yeah. if we start seeing more gits on the table, we start seeing more beasts of chaos on the table. If zombies and thralls and and um, skeletons and the hordes start coming back onto the yeah. table, Morph's mighty mushroom might have play. Um, Scuttle Tide, not too bad. I think the, the ability to get a endless spell anywhere on the table is a great threat piece. Um, sure. But the Malevolent Moon, um, whether you have... Um, and I think this is an interesting thing. Like, I don't know if I would get the Malevolent Moon and Scragrot. I feel like that's too many moons. I don't think I need that many resources. But if you're not taking Scragrot or if Scragrot dies, you have an additional source of bad moon um, through the Malevolent Moon. Yeah, for sure. The malevolent, malevolent moon's nice. I think the other thing I like with the um with the with the the scuttle tide as well is it's it's actually quite good at shutting down battle tactics because again, like y- you can put it out on a six if you've got Scrag Rot at the plus one. They have to roll an, an eight to get rid of it, which is actually quite hard. And if, mm. if again, if they go for like kill a unit and you can just move that scuttle tide back in front of your own unit, you can actually deny battle tactics really clever with scuttle tide. I, I really like it for that, but um. I'm probably biased about Mork's Mighty Mushroom because I've I've got some some tales of glory that thing. There was one game that did 46 mortal wounds to a cruel boy's army before we worked out before he did any damage to me. So I've probably got bi- biased memories of of Mork's Mighty Mushroom, <laughs> which is probably why I'll, I'll end up taking that. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think Loon Skin to just get those three points is great. Yeah. Victor just Victor just asking, did I just hear too many moons? The Gitzquisition. <laughs> Yeah, Victor. Let me ha- let me tell you, my friend. 
I currently have a STL being commissioned for Scragrot the Loon King's crown. So at my next tournament, I'm going to wear Scragrot. So right, I right. am the judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to the <laughs> Bad Moon. Look, all I'm saying is between the actual battle tactic, sorry, the, the, your faction Bad Moon, the Loon Shrine Bad Moon, if you have Scragrot Bad Moon, and then you have um, the Malevolent Moon, that's t potentially too many that you don't need. And it's a resource that maybe could have been better spent somewhere else. That's yeah. my point. But if you're not taking Scraggy or if Scraggy seems to be someone that gets, gets targeted very easily and you need another source, or actually the, the, what I love about the Malevolent Moon is the speed. So if you find that you are a squig build or a spider build with, you know, some of the ambushing shenanigans and Scraggy's not going to be able to catch up and you don't want to use, you know, the, the teleport to move him around, the bad moon actually is a really good way to sling it forward. But do my moon clan need it? Probably not. Do my squigs need it? Probably. Yeah, for sure. And I, th I think as well, you can, with, with the moon, you can, like, with, with the under spell, you can actually use it to support battle tactics as well. So someone obviously talk about being affected by the light of the bad moon. Um, so you can do some quite clever plays with that as well to move it around into a position and, and be able to contact, do a different battle tactic as well. So, so yeah. What about what about our, our spider fang? Um, if you're running a spider general, are, are you running super nasty venom, or are you looking at something else like I mean, loon touched or the clammy hand? Yeah, cl I, I, I'm always going to be a fan of the clammy hand pa paired with king paired with the king gits faction. I think that's that, that's just so powerful. But um, but I, I I do also like the super nasty venom one because the the the, the, the scuttle tide boss. Um, on on the smaller spider is still yes yeah, it's, it's still just a it's just a it's still a great little little nuke piece really to, and especially now you can deep strike him with a big spider and that big spider can disappear again and just almost drop him off like a, like a drop ship and then reappear later on the game um I I just really like that ability really to just have one nuke with a small base they can get in behind enemy lines get in where you want it um and, and just be a threat piece but it it is hard to see past the clammy hands in 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 most of those lists I think yeah. It, it makes it a pseudo terror geist, right? Because the spider, yep. the Arachnorok spider does three mortal wounds with the venom. Then yep. if you double it, then we're doing six mortal wounds on a six. So it's yep. pretty brutal. Yep. You, you'll delete those five wound idiots without making them strike last. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and the the, the, the little the little spider guy can you can get him on this on a similar sort of output as well. Um he's obviously got a much smaller base. So you, you can you can really get around. So um so yeah. I think I think I think there's some. I I do like the spider ones, but if I was writing a competitive spider list, I'd I'd probably end up taking clammy hand just to keep recycling units of spider riders. Essentially, send them in, do loads of mortals, bring them back, and then just repeat. Yeah, I'd agree. I my yeah. rolling against the the moon clan lair is terrible. I rarely get it off. So getting a consistent way and then you know teleporting and things like that. Um, I'm yeah. a fan. Artifacts. Let's talk. Let's put our trog hat on for a second. Uh, yep. What are the artifacts that you're choosing for your your list? Yeah, so it's it it, it, it it's got to be the glory house it for me. Like now, to be honest, that, that that's the one. I, I, I say that there is a second one in there that I, fit, that I think's a competitor, which is the the speaky skull fetch. I think does still jump out. I mean, it, that is a good one. Um, but the builds that I'm going for, where I want to keep my I want to keep my general alive because the grand strategy I'm going to go for is going to involve my general. And he's super important for Trogs, like having a big unit that has an 18 inch bubble and can issue commands. That's Trogs still aren't elite. So it, it's surprising how quickly Trogs will disappear if I don't have a unit to, 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 to help them with buffs like inspiring presence and all that sort of thing. So, 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 so the glowy one, I think, is, is, is my personal favorite here. And it has got a lot better. So it used to be the case that every, you had to roll every dice, every ward save, you had to roll one by one. It was so painful. And it was, it was so tense if you got shot at by a unit of Sentinels and you had 10 of those things to roll. And you were just praying you got to the end of it without a one. Um, whereas, as, as Victor rightly says now, it's, it, it, it's so, so strong. Um, and, you know, play, players who know how important the Trogboss is and have this ability might chip damage him. So, like, your Seraphons might try and choose him every time for the Comet, or your, your Stormcast Eternals might be dropping AOE Mortals at him. But, you know, the, there's, it's more than likely you're not going to roll a 1, and he's going to keep that 4 at Ward. Um, so so I love that I love that personally. And he's gonna go through multiple phases now where he takes no damage. Um and, and and obviously he's got the great heal as well. So if someone does sink damage into him and doesn't kill him, you don't roll that one. You can probably get him back up to 12 runes quite quickly, and it's it's just been wasted output from your opponent. Um 
but the speaky skull one um is is also especially now in the absence of of battleshock immunity um th- i like the look of this one even more and th- there's probably there's two elements to it really firstly is uh we spoke about inspiring presence but but the ability to do that on two units at once could be huge if people start you know really focusing down units but also the trog boss now has a really good command ability where when he issues the all-out attack when he chooses a unit to do it if it's a trog off unit it gets plus one attack as well as plus one hit so the ability to you know you've you've itchy nuisance something that's fighting last you've pushed in two into six rock guts they both get a fight before your opponent and then suddenly having one extra attack each in the unit of rock guts or fell waters um is huge so you can really spread your damage as well so so I am I am torn at the moment, but I'm I'm leaning towards all while healing, all while you keep on healing as well. So you just keep healing them back up. Nothing's dying, you're killing a lot of stuff. But um but yeah, I'm torn between the two. I actually want to try running, and I knew this is something that Stu Hodges is doing in the chat, running um two two dank holds, one with the glory and one with the with the speaky skull. But it's just four hundred points. So it's trying to figure out if is that too much investment in just buffs, but it's def- definitely something I'm keen to try and, and see how that looks on the table. I just want to make a minor dot connection here. So we just spoke about one of the previous command traits that allows you to get plus two wounds and treat it as a monster. So your general could have two extra wounds, counts as a monster, four up ward. Yeah. Huge. Like, four, 14 you, wounds, four up ward monster. <laughs> and you will see yeah. you will see very shortly uh, there is one grand strategy that if your general is affected by Light of the Bad Moon three times and still survives, you score your grand strat. Like there's a great way to achieve that grand strategy with a super durable hero that can take it. Um, could be, you know, there's a whole bunch of great benefits there. So either way, sure. great combination. Um, yeah. with your, I, I would agree with you. I mean, the pet gribbly, I love just for the the law text. <laughs> um, yeah. And to be honest with you, I actually don't mind a pet gribbly. If I was playing in the current season with Trogs, I actually don't mind having this uh this hero paired up with um let's say a unit of trogs maybe a command entourage and with the pet gribbly once it dies getting that plus one to hit and plus one to wound while it's in rage that could really smash and then the the trogs would fight it then simultaneously so that could be a combination but yeah i tend to agree glowy and speaky skull is probably my my top two from yeah, the, I think the top so. side I, I, I think I think if the Dankhold Trog boss had the same sort of output as the Dankhold Trog offs, I'd be even more tempted by that that pet Gribbly. Yeah. But it's the D six. I'm still, I've, I've got bad memories of that D six. <laughs> Roll, rolling two ones and be like, no, it could have been twelve. And then the reality is it's a two. So, um, but yeah, yeah, speak, Speaky Skull and Glowy, both great artifacts. Never a bad, never a bad position to be in, to be battling between two. So, Spider Head on now. What's our yep. spider? What's our spider? Spider artifacts. So, uh, really like headdress of many eyes, and I, 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 I think there's a build here again. Thinking about the the, the small spider hero who's quite killy, um, he, I think he now can play a really good role in a spider army where you can, you can drop him behind enemy lines and just 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 push him in. And if you know so, some of your big like, if you think about the big cow and Lumineth, for example, he's only got like four attacks, four or five attacks. If suddenly he has to roll a five or six, it's actually quite feasible to think you can pin big units with low attacks but high damage out, but you can pin them with like a quite small hero just by sending them in. And he can maybe probably trade quite well. So I, I do really like that one. Um, but if if you were going to pick one, like the Totem of the Spider God, if you're leaning into a into a spider build, um, is, 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 is quite hard to look past, I think. Um, especially now, you know, you put it on a little GC, who you give Tunnel Master, you teleport them into position for that one big round of combat where, where, um, where you know, like, you're going to push all your spiders in, and then all of a sudden you can get them in the right place to have all your spiders within 12, um, and then essentially, essentially, I'm just, just, just being able to, to do mortals on fives instead of sixes. The one, the, the one shame here, though, is that the, the, a lot of the buffs for spiders, they specifically say on the war scroll now that it's on sixes. Um, so, so you, you, you're really getting, probably not as much buffs as you'd like you just get an extra mortals on fives but um but yeah but but i, I like the totem one i think i was building a spider list i'd go for that i don't think you could tunnel master because the scuttle bus spider would count as a mount which would make him not a gc yeah so, then, so, but you so could use hand of gawk or something else 
Yeah, and thinking about actually putting Totem on like a, a web spinner shaman instead instead of him essentially. So Tunnel yes. Master a web spinner shaman in range, um, with his and, and like then give out that buff essentially, which which I think could be could be quite a good way to do it. But yeah, but a, a, a couple of good ones in there, depending on how you want to play it essentially. Yeah, I think Totem would be my first. Then Headdress of Many Eyes would be my second. I guess that like with traditional spider builds that I see, I don't see a lot of scuttle bosses. I see a lot of people building around the Yeah, the big so guys. I don't. Yeah. yeah, like like I don't. I, I don't think I've ever seen. And I won the models goofy. Unfortunately, I wish. <laughs> I wish that was updated. I feel like the yeah. spiders deserved yeah. an update, and the scuttle boss was one of them. But two, I just see more people leaning into the Arachnorox just because it does. Yeah. It's, it's durable. It's it does a monster. It does great things. Um, could do some really nice minuses to hit and things like that. So, yeah. um, they're the two choices. Um, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I mean, obviously, Moonface Momet is another one that could be could yeah. work really well for for any of your smaller heroes, um, as long as they're a wizard. Um, even the staff of sneak and st stealing isn't too bad, but Moonface is one that is a sleeper because it was locked to Madcap Shamans, yeah. so it was very popular in my list because I always ran a Madcap, but I always wished I could put it on a Fungoid because Fungoids yeah. never take an artifact. Now I've dropped my my Madcap, and it's all about it's all about the Fungoid and Moonface Momet. So um, yeah. Obviously, it doesn't play into the mortal wounds that you would normally run with your spiders. But if you did take um, a unit of stabbers, if you did take something else, or you want to get some more attack out of your your spiders and not just rely heavily on mortals, Moonface is a is a good one. Yeah, for sure. I've always been a big fan of Moonface. Yeah, it was I, I think in the, in the trog list, it, it it's the second artifact I'm taking, and, and I'm I'm building to be able to take it as well. Um, because the ability to get like rockets on minus three. Even more now, when we start talking about Fellwater Vomit, which 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 we'll come on to later, is just incredibly powerful. And I think I think actually, it as you say, it would it does still go well with spiders because if if you don't roll those fives and sixes, there's actually still damage free attacks floating around in there that if you can get through the person's save, you can still do a lot of damage. Um. So yeah, and going on the fungoid is a is a is a huge huge glow up for the fungoid and and why I think he's now replacing the little madcap shaman in my list. And you can't you can't see him outside of twelve. So even if someone's brought sharpshooters, you can probably point your little moon face moment, you pop your little moment at them without being shot. So even even better. <laughs> and, and I was I was literally about to call that out. So the fungoid, for example, um, can't be targeted uh, if you're outside of twelve. So when you're ready to reveal it, that's when you step out, use the mom the moment because you have to be yeah. within twelve. But until then, it's a great little wizard that can't be targeted. And yeah, um, yeah obviously it lost its ward, but. Um, again, some combinations starting to form, and I hope we're giving you ideas. Anything we say, by the way, if you haven't caught these streams in the past, we're not saying something's bad or something's good. It's just what we're attracted to, and you might prove us wrong. There might be some things that will happen in the meta that will kind of shift our perception, but um, I'm liking some of the combinations that are starting to come up at the moment. Um, spells, we talk spells, and um, we've got some good spells. Um, we'll probably call that really quickly before I throw it over to you. Is Nicket Nicket used to be Scragrot's signature spell? Um, that's now moved over to here. He's got a new spell, and Scragrot now knows all of the Moon Clan spell law. So the first column, um, putting on your Trog hat for a second, um, yeah. and you, we don't you don't have any native wizards. Um, <clears throat> what are you drawn to, and how are you getting these spells? Yeah, so so I think I'll I'll, I'll I'm always going to be allying in some form of wizard. Um, so I think I've said Scragwash Pretty Bitch is going to be on every list. And obviously, he knows all the law, so straight away you've got access to all of them. And the other one's pro probably going <laughs> to love that comment. The, the other one's pro probably going to be a fungoid um, who you can't sell at twelve. And it, it, Itchy Nuisance was always the one that I would go to first. Actually, even ahead of Hand of Gork, to be honest, just because of how, which might be might be a controversial opinion, but but just because of how the the the, the trog the trog list plays, I don't actually want my trogs away from my castle. Um, so telling people that I've got a that I've got an um, <laughs> telling people that I've got a, a teleport on my list was more just so they were aware of it really, and I couldn't. But I was I was never going to send a unit of six rockets out wide left out, out of buff range and uh, away from my um away from the ability to like to to dish, dish out CP and things like that. Um, so itchy nuisance was always my go-to because I think the ability to even make something that's incredibly killy and incredibly survivable fight last and put multiple units into it, or fight on two fronts before your opponent um is 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 i think just such an incredibly powerful ability so it itchy nuisance is, was always my 
my first go-to spell personally, ju- just for the Trog Castle build. Um, whereas in, in other lists, um, I think I think you'd maybe look more at Hand of Gork. But in my lists I ran last edition, I was always putting Itch, Nuisance, and Horn, Hand of Gork in because we're in the Fungoid and, and, and the Madcap Shaman. Um, whereas this edition, I think I'd be putting Itch, Nuisance on the Fungoid and letting Scragrot do the do the Hand of Gork teleport, essentially. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you. Um, Itchy Nuisance, I love. Um, Hand of Gork, I love. And I use Hand of Gork less offensively, more um, when my units are being recycled and I get I need them to get back into the fight um, and they have a, a much smaller footprint. I could use Hand yeah. of Gork to recycle them, go onto a backfield objective, steal something, you know, turn four or turn five with two yeah. bodies. Um, that's how I always used it. I mean, there's times where I would like teleport a unit of, of grots that had a fanatics hiding in it, drop them, you know, within six inches and charge and hope I roll a six up. Um, cause I wouldn't have a hero there to reissue a command and fanatics don't can't issue it themselves. Yep. But the other spell we haven't quite talked about yet that I would always run even in a non spider build is sneaky distraction. I yep. love sticky distraction. And if you don't have access, access to fell waters, if you don't have access to netters, or even if you just want to punish your opponent for using all that attack and canceling out your netter or your, you know, your whatever, um, sneaky distraction was always another one that I really liked. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, I think, I think now if you pair it with the Gobba Palooza and their spell as well, which gives a minus one to hit Holy within 12 bubble. And then if you're running fells, like you, you can pretty much make it impossible for your opponent to ever hit on their own hit stats and get them on like minus two or three so there's some and, and again 65 point hero can take this with a five up ward uh sorry 65 point wizard can take this now in the form of the little web spinner guy so so yeah you can you can probably chuck that on him and, and take him along um so, so there's some nice ones and obviously nick it nick it is in is powerful um if your opponent's got like a key artifact and you get someone like scragwa to cast that and you, you roll that 10 plus um then yeah, it's good. It's a re- really, really good spell law. I think the Spider Fang spell law is actually really solid. Curse of the Spider God, I could definitely see being used. Scuttling Terror is actually a really good spell. So yeah. I think all three of them are worth worth their value. Um, being able to get a, a, a normal move, especially you know using Scuttling Terrors to get that block of buffed up um, sp- uh, spiders, uh, spider riders. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. But Curse of the Spider God, that's the one that I, I look at and go, right, pick one enemy unit within range invisible, and then um, uh, attacks always fail on ones and twos, and saves always fail on ones and twos. So if you're putting a high volume of attacks into a unit that needs to die, um, in addition to the mortal wounds you can do from Spider Venom, like that'll bring down the tankiest unit. Yeah, like think like your Kragnosses of this world. I mean, obviously he's he's got a spell ignore, so it's a good chance he might ignore it. But if you think about like your Metricas doing the rounds a bit now, and a lot of if if, you, if they're leaning into Avalonor build, he's pretty much on a two up the whole game. So actually suddenly putting him on a three up um, is is powerful. If you, whatever you put into him, really, um, it's it, 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 it's a good spell. And yes, I really really rate Scotland Terrors. I, I think. There's some good players there in terms of stopping the redeploy, which is which is one of the biggest fears whenever you're going for a battle tactic and you move within three or someone never move six away and you've got to try and make a nine inch charge. But if you can just hero phase move your spiders three away, um, then then you can shut down redeploys and stuff as well. So so there's there's plenty of good players within the within the Scotland Towers one as well. Yeah, I, I, with Nick it Nick it really quickly. There's been a couple of times where I've stolen someone's artifact and it's great, but. <laughs> Getting the ten up, and uh, I think the range has been shortened. It's now yeah. range twelve. Wow. That that makes yeah. that makes nick it nick it less attractive because yeah. it's a casting value of eight, which is hard. Yeah, and it's range twelve. So I'm like, eh, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I think like you you start moving into portals territory here, don't you? And taking taking portals, but then but then you're using another cast to get that off. So so yeah, I'm not as convinced about that one. And, and squ- squiggler. Like you know, obviously the last one was was really strong. The run and charge. Um, the only real benefit I see for this is is on Squig Herd. I'm assuming that's basically why it's there because they can't issue or receive CP, so you can actually re-roll a charge with them. That that's why I'm assuming that's crept in there. So if you're free away and you double a one, you're not like oh that's that's game over. You can actually re-roll it. Um, so I'm assuming that's where they've gone with Squiggler, but it's uh, not as good as it used to be. No, no, no. but it's, it has a very defined use for it. Yeah. 
which has our git hordes, which are subfaction. Nice segue into that. So the King's Gits and Bad Snatchers are the two new subfactions. Um, obviously, there is Glog's Mega Mob, which is our Trogoth build, but doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you have to play Trogoths. It just means it's one that's focused towards it. Then obviously there's a spider one with Grim Scuttle and Jaws of Mork. Before we get into the specific ones, talk to me about the King's Gits and the Bad Snatchers. Do you like these either with your spider or your trog hats? Yeah, like I, I like the King's Gits. I think for 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 both for both. And I, I, my initial list, I, I expect the King's Gits will, will be what I'm using. Um, the, the 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 bring back from the shrine having already got better that you can do it on any unit um, was one thing, but but the ability to actually have a have a four up reroll in. And and if you obviously lean into the whole um clammy hand and have two four re roll ins, suddenly you've got an incredibly reliable way of, of just of bringing back units and just not being afraid to push them in and lose them. And suddenly a two thousand point army becomes a three thousand point army because you're just recycling so much. And that's a lot of wounds for for anyone to get through. And I think I, so. I'm I'm a huge fan of the, the king's git. And also there's more battle tactics. There's a battle tactic now that relies on a summoned unit. Um, obviously, you can put screens back up. There's so many buffs in the book now that a unit of three rock guts coming back from a unit of six can actually be incre incredibly killy. Two fell waters can still go and give give your enemy minus one save. Like this, th th there's lots of benefits now in terms of bringing bringing back these half flies units. So huge fan of the king's gets, and I think that's what I'll be running to start with. Um, bad, bad snatches. Go on. Just just really yeah. quickly, um, scrag rot and zarbags gets are also keyword locked to the to, to, to king's gets. So if you're using Scrag Rot, uh, and I've seen this question a couple of times actually on Facebook, if you use Scrag Rot in Jaws of Mork or Glog's Metabob, that's cool, you can use it, but he's not going to gain any of the self-faction benefits. While if you're within yeah. King's Gits and you are running um, Scraggy, um, you definitely would. So just FYI on that one. Um, sorry, please continue. No, no, that, that, that's actually helpful because I was, I was just about to come on the Bard Snatchers and say, yeah, the... That, that 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 that's where this falls down i think sadly in that you the, the the wizard that unfortunately is the one that i think everyone's going to be taking and your most reliable guy is can't can't benefit from this subfactionally so maybe you've got one or maybe a palooza as well who who benefit from this but i think that it's it's hard in my opinion to 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 justify that over the ability to reliably bring back bring back a unit at half size so I don't mind bad satchers, but I, I don't think we're going to see it in many in many lists when you've got the others to choose from. It's literally where I went. When I saw these, I'm like, yeah, King's Gits is not bad. I saw bad snatchers, I'm like, yes, that's my sub-faction. Then when I got to Scragrot's War Scroll and I noticed he was King's Gits, I'm like, there goes that whole idea because I wanted yeah. Scraggy with a couple of fungoids and some, you know, a web spinner and things like that. Yeah. No, not a web spinner, but like a fungoids and, and, and uh, madcaps. So that, that whole idea, well, I think it's a good idea. Like, I think it could be interesting if you want to run multiple, I don't know, fungoids, but do I yeah. want to base my whole sub faction on a couple of four wound, five wound wizards? Yeah. Not that, really. That's just it. Yeah, that's just it. And I think it, it, I, it's a helpful replacement for the absence of the plus one. I, I, but I, I think it's just in a, it's just in such a competitive field of sub factions now um that, that that there's there's you know the jaws is jaws is great if you're running squigs um and then obviously the, the spider and trog ones are, are, in, are in a much better place now as well so I, I, i'd argue with, i'd say i'd say it's probably the worst of, of the five in, in my opinion anyways yeah i would i would agree i i yeah. would agree um talk to me about glogs glogs mega mob so this is going to benefit our trogoth keywords but not necessarily locking us only to trogoth so talk to me about how you think about this and then how do you think about it versus king's gits yeah so so it's essentially I, I like this better than what we used to have for glogs so when i first started playing gits i used to take glogs mega mob and it, it, the old one was that you got plus one to your regen rolls and if you were under the bad moon you could re-roll it so you were on a free up re-rolling healing d3 wound so it was it was it was pretty it was pretty reliable and actually towards the latter end of it i stopped running glogs and started running the grim scuttle tribes one because it meant that my spider rider screens had a five of spell ignore and i wasn't locked into the artifact or anything so it was just it was just a bit of free real estate on them really um so so haven't haven't run glogs for a while but i think i i, I like it but uh, it, it, the issue I've got with it is that it can't, and you're probably asking too much if it did do this, but that it just can't bring back models. And I think that you've you've got so much access to healing now, anyways, um, in terms of every hero phase you can do it. You know, your generals doing D6, um, your 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 rockets are doing D3, and your fellwater's doing D3 at the start of every hero phase. 
I, I actually feel comfortable with the healing I've now, I've now got in my army um, to, to, that would lean me towards the king's gits over this personally because the ability to bring back a dead unit reliably, like a unit of three rockets or, or two fell waters, I think across a five round game will be more impactful than taking a rock gut from one one to four wounds. So it might be useful stopping battle tactics, but typically people are going to be putting one unit into you. If you survive, great. And then you're going to go next rather than you're going to heal yourself off, if that makes sense. So so I think I still lean towards the King's Gets person out of these two. Yeah, it's a really tough decision for me. Um, I love the idea of Glogs, but you really need to go heavy Trogs because if you anything outside of Trogs doesn't get any benefits. While the King's Gets, if you run some Stabber Screens or yeah. some Spiders or something else, you're going to benefit there. I guess it depends on where, you, where where we're at at the meta and what is going into your trogs, right? If you have a lot of um, a lot of attacks going in at like Ren two, Ren three, that are doing significant damage to your trogs, yeah, I think the regen um, and uh, being able to to heal is a great idea. But then you've also got things like the life swarm that could do the same thing. So yeah. do you just take an endless spell? On the flip side, if you're taking a block of six rock guts and then they eventually die, and it's really hard to take down a unit of six rock guts in the old book, let alone the new book. Um, and then when they finally get rid of them, you take that six to three and you're able to re-roll that dice. Yeah, that, the, the, the King's Git seems like you get a lot more benefit, but if if you're doing a full mega mob or full trog off, yeah. I, can, I can see the benefit. Yeah, I think so. I think if you're going to run like dank hold trog offs and trog bosses and... Yeah, and you just just push it all in. And as Stuart says, if you don't die, you don't need to bring anything back. That that that's the dream. <laughs> a, re a reinforced unit of dank old trogoffs like this. This could be quite nice on, for example, if you got two of them on twenty wounds in the same unit. Um, but I think because of the way my lists have been built, and I've got a couple of blocks of six and then some MSU fell waters, and then screens that I want to bring back. I think I'm I'm going to lean towards the king's gets personally. Uh, interesting question from Victor. Isn't mathematically better bring back a unit of three because it goes from three to two as opposed to being six to three? Yes, in that isolated look, absolutely. But who's doing more damage, six or three? Who's getting more? Bu who's getting more value from your all-out attack and plus one to hit buffs, a six or a three? So, from a resource management perspective, your six is going to give you more value. But from a pure regeneration point of view, yeah. The, the the three would get you more value because a three goes to two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I I think that all comes down to like the what 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 role that unit's playing in your army. Like I I, I would I would run uh, rockets and sixes personally because I want them to be a hammer and an anvil. Um, so I don't want them to die in the first place. Whereas a, a unit of three fell waters, I'd, I'd be running as a screen and a buff piece who can also do a bit of damage. So them coming back as a two instead of a three. Is, is impactful, but I, I want my rockets really in sixes um, so I can get in there and do, do do the required damage output. Yeah, three, in my time fighting against Trogs, three rock guts don't scare me. No, six, six rock guts scares me. I will avoid or I'll have to put a lot of resources into pull six down um, or I just avoid them and I go, go fight all the threes. But uh, I guess it depends on, again, how you play, how many battle play, uh, objectives and all that stuff. But, yeah, I, I would yeah. still like at least one, if not two, units of sixes. Um, yeah. Yeah, two attacks each in the unit of three. Six dice and threes and threes is, is, is tough <laughs> Whereas versus a unit of six. So, yeah. Um, and then with our spider hat on, Grim Scuttle, are you, are you a Grim Scuttle fan or are you leaning, again, more into the King's Gits? Yeah, do you know what? I, th I think if I, I actually think if I was built, if I'm building, and the one I've talked about later, I've gone for this option. If I'm building a spider army, I would be, especially in this current GHB, I, I would, I, I like, I like Grim Scuttle actually, um, because the the, the Skitter Strand, I, I think you're going to want Skitter Strands in your spider army because that ability actually to come down and or basically deliver a unit anywhere on the board where you want it and then disappear. Um, because we we there is there is a there is a lot of castle armies floating around at the minute that are doing quite well, um, and actually f force if you can dominate the board and tag objectives far out and force your opponent to spread out, that's actually quite a, an impactful player style and an effective way to play. And there, there's lots of battle plans in this GHB where that there's some you can castle up on. There's, there's no six objectives ones anymore, which sort of suggests on the immediate face of it that castles are going to do well. But actually, one of them the objectives disappear, one of them they appear, one of them they're on the far edges of the board. 
twists and turns is like the wild west you, you don't know you don't know what's on and what's off until you until you go and stand on it so actually i, I like the idea of a grim scuttle army that has mul- multiple points points of points of power essentially where you're bringing down the skitter strand with a 10-man spider fang screen and maybe a little foot little foot hero or something in front of it um so i'm I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that one actually in terms of the spider builds and i think i would i would go for that um over king skits I think Victor in the chat's also nailed it here. If you are someone who's going to run a lot of Arachnorox, um, you would, or you want to use Grim Scuttle, then you would go Scuttle a Grim Scuttle t- uh, sub faction. If you yeah. are someone who's building your list around Spider Riders, knowing how fragile they are, and you just want to keep delivering them to your opponent, King's Gits would be the way you'd go. I think that's a really good way of thinking about it. Very, very way. clean. Yeah. yeah. I see value in both of them, um, and I love some of the shenanigans that um, the Grim uh, the Grim Scuttle Grim Scuttle um, the, the Skitter Strand the Skitter Strand um, brings to the table. Yeah. The the other call I just mentioned, just off the back of what you said about the battle plans, is that there's a lot of focus on the scrum. So in the middle of the board, it seems like there's a lot of battle plans that are forcing you to go into the middle, which is great for your ambushing spiders to be able to jump in because there should be a lot more space around the edges. So yeah, you'll have yeah. where previously, like when there's been eight eight objectives, there's really not a lot of space for you to kind of jump in and be outside of nine, especially on those big pie plate kind of bases. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I used to find that when, when I first, I used to run the Gargan, the Elkers, the Gargan, because I used to push them in and make them raw something. And then when the Skitter Strand became cheaper, um, I started running him instead because it felt like a no brainer, really, because he could deep strike. But um, but yeah, even when people forget about the Skitter Strand, they're usually okay because it's, it's such, you, you'll say, oh, just as a heads up, I've got him in deep strike, remember? And they, it really doesn't matter because it's 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 difficult to leave a Skitter Strand size hole in the back of your army plus nine inches. But I think in this, his ability to push units out alongside him who have got smaller bases. I think you could really, really play into that a bit actually and, and get get behind your opponent's army, which is exciting. And like as Sikarth said as well, I love the Skitter Strands kiss and run, he called yeah. it. Uh, it's the yeah. it's the equivalent to like strike and fade a little bit. It goes, you know, you strike, you do your combat stuff, then you go back into ambush. Um, I like some of that shenanigans. So, um, so I think good. it's definitely so worth good. considering. Yeah. You haven't really seen a lot of Skitter Strands before, but that for me is um is one that I really like. Uh, before we get into your lists, I feel like we uh, there's a lot of great things, and this is this is the problem, right? Imagine we just had talked about uh, Squigs and Moon Clan as well. <laughs> yeah. It'll be five hours, and we haven't even yeah. talked about some of the grand strats and battle tactics. So, first off, let's just knock it out of the way. Trog off, Trog herd heavies. Do you like this battalion or not? Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I like it. it. It gives you again. I'm, 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 I'm probably not going to be in the list. That I'm probably going to go for. I don't think at the moment I'm going to be running the Dan Cole Trogoffs personally, um, just because of what they're competing with in terms of points. But, um, but, I, but I, I do think it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really helpful uh, battalion to have now because, because what you can effectively do is you can have the Trog boss plus a Trogoff. You can get you can get your extra artifact, and then you can build the rest of your list into a one drop if you want. Um, so you're not forced to take those free foot heroes, which maybe you're going to take anyways. You're probably going to take a dank old trog boss plus a plus plus um scrag rock plus maybe a fungoid. So you could go for that, but it opens up that ability to be like effectively a, a, a free drop list, um, which isn't a bad thing to to have better, more opportunities to give the turn away and force your opponent to come to you when you've got sort of slower moving trogs. So maybe you can get them turn one or take the turn and just castle up on the objectives. And be like, right, you've got to come shift me now. So I like how this opens up lower drop options, which is probably when I would be thinking about this um, versus anything else. Um, it's just that it's sort of locking you into three three hundred and eighty points. Is it would be my one watch out for it. And I'm, I'm I need to try them on the table, but I'm still not fully convinced by one hundred and eighty points for the for the trog off. He, he he looks good. He's got some decent damage output, but he's competing with some very good stuff in this book now. Um, so not one that I'll take, but I can I can see a home for it. I'm yet to see the trog boss, sorry, trog off in action. Yeah. Um, it, it's always fell water, it's always rock guts. I'm yet to see it, and I look at it and it's attractive. I'm like, this sounds interesting, but then as you said, you compare it to more rock guts, you compare it to more fell water that then can regenerate and come back from the shrine. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I don't I know if these pieces is enough. Always. That's it, and I think if he if he could issue and receive his own commands, um, then I would be like full. Yeah, I would be. I'd be oh, fully can, in. Can I don't he not do it? I don't think he's elite. No, um, I could be wrong though. But I, as far as I'm aware, he can't issue or receive his own CP. 
but may, may, maybe want to check. But um, but again, then you sort you sort of restricted a bit to your own. Levels. I mean, what one thing I I'm a hundred percent going to try is is a reinforced trog off with sneaky snufflers. So you got twenty wounds effectively on the three up five up, just running around the ward. Um, I do I do I do really want to try that. But um, he's not he's not elite. He's not elite. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't think you can. But so because because if he was, he would be a really good piece to just put out wide and just go fight a go fight like a weak flank. But again, he's he's staying in your castle really. Oh, he doesn't have to take battle shock, which is which is a big benefit. But mm. um, but the absence of a ward is I think where he's where he might fall down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, that's another good call out as well. We have even talked about. I think. If you're a player uh, from the past, look at this with fresh eyes because if you were a trog player back in the day, yeah. you would have never looked at sneaky snufflers. I'm glad you mentioned it because that was really a grot benefit. And I love yeah. running my sneaky snufflers. Now it affects gloom spite as opposed to just grot. So all of a sudden, and that changed as well, where you can now give a five up ward. And if you roll a six on the dice, you get a plus one attack as well. So yeah. imagine giving six rock guts a five up ward that are regenerating and healing with a plus one attack because they receive the, um, the Trog boss, uh, all that attack boost. Um, that is brutal. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you can get it like, and, 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 and then, yeah, effectively minus two or minus three rends with your opponent and able to modify it. They are, yeah, fells. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the thing that has been just been called out there, which is, which is the big glow up for the Trog off is the fact that wounds on twos. So it's very easy to get it on twos and twos, but, um, but yeah, in, in the absence of a ward, I think it and it's 20 points more than an extra three rock guts, which are two more wounds with a five up ward, same movement, same CP issues. I think he probably just loses out. But I am gonna try I am gonna try them because I love the models. <laughs> I don't want to put them on the tail, but I think competitively probably fall short. I do want to see. I mean it's ten, it is ten wounds, right? So it's a big uh wound pit as well for one model. Yeah. Um, but talk to me about the grand strats. So we've got four grand strategies to choose from. Um what yep. are we what are we like are, are they all good um are they like situational like how, how do you feel yeah. feel about them no so 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 scheme fabrication um not a huge farm I, I don't like the thought of having to lock yourself into four I, anything that reduces the number of battle attacks that you can be doing in the game is not a good thing because because the, obviously as obviously not like obviously the way to win warhammer is score more points than your opponent so it's it's all good getting your grand strat but you you, you want to be restoring battle attacks every single turn so i, I don't think scheme for every occasion is great um i'll, I'll come on the chase in the moon last because i think that's probably my favorite uh protect protect the shrine i think probably sounds good and i remember when i first re first read this i thought this sounds really good but then the more i thought about it it's actually it's going to be quite easy to shut down because it just says um there's there's no there's no enemy models within 12 so if someone's got a teleport and they go second turn five or if somebody just auto runs something at the battlefield and just gets on toes toes your loon shrine within 12 you don't want to be thinking about having to protect your entire shrine that late in the game when you're probably fighting for points on or, or against some opponents. Um, and then the superior spell flinger, again, I'm 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 always cautious of ones that require you to have anything that your opponent can get rid of incredibly easy. And I think this is another one. If you've got two spells on the board, your opponent goes second, um, and they just get rid of one, or or even goes first and gets rid of one, then you've got no wizards left to cast them. Um, I, I feel like those bottom two are just too easy to stop. Um, whereas chasing the moon, I like grand strategies that, that put the emphasis on you and you've got more control over. Um, and it's it's definitely not an auto free points because there are some of them floating around at the moment, like fire slayers. Put put an invocation on the board if your opponent doesn't have a priest. Good game. I've got my free points. Don't so have to worry about it anymore. Whereas th this isn't in that realm because you've got to keep them alive. Um, but I really like chasing the moon. For, for because you can take like a fungoid with it who can't be shot again you can hide them behind the shrine give them a five up ward from the from one of the aspects of the champions and um, but probably more and more excitingly for me is that you put in the trog boss with chasing the moon i think it's a really good play if he's a 12 or 14 win model with a three up effective save and a four up ward he's probably going to be sticking around hopefully you, you're going to have him under the moon whether he's next to the shrine where he's next to scrag rot um it's a nice it's an easier one to, to, to get i think so of the four that's the one that i'll personally be taking and i think over the ones that are in the in in the ghb as well i think to force point here um scheme for every occasion is surprise it is it is doable so we're not saying that it's a, not a good grand strategy but in the thick of the battle when i go to a tournament and i have my list locked in for five games and i'm in a situation for the win 
I have to either go for a, a, a glue spike gets tactic or I choose something from the, the general's handbook that I ha that I can easily score. I don't want to have to be forced to go for the grand strategy, the battle tactic when I could have done something else. And yeah. this this type of battle tactic, grand strategy makes me think um, in, in a couple of years from now, will we see battle tactics and grand strategies drop from the general's handbook? I wonder if we're preparing for that future because it does seem like it comes up a lot, this type of tactic. So not yet, but let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a really good observation, actually, yeah, because the, 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 I know the Slayer's book's the same. One of their grand strats is to, um, is, is, to, is to go away and try and achieve Slayer's-only battle tactics. But yeah, and like you say, if... If, if if you've got like an easy tactic on from the book, like an eye for an eye, you'll you'd be kicking yourself if you had to toss up between that but give up your grand strat. So actually having the ability to just to just choose any of eight battle tactics, I think is always or more on this occasion. Actually, I think maybe maybe we're up to twelve now, um, because we've got the book ones. I think is just is just why chasing the moon wins out for me. See, I think it, that's the interesting thing about this book because as a primarily moon clan player, I think chasing the moon is hard. Because yeah. most of my gen most of my, yeah. my generals and my heroes are four, five, six wounds at best. So protecting that from like a, a mortal wound sniping unit is 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 easy. Um, yeah. let alone the slow speed getting it up the board being affected by the light. But um chasing the moon is great for squigs, for spiders, for um for trogoths. So it just shows you the differences. But I think chasing the moon, especially again, Scragrot, Loon Shrine bad moon malevolent moon you've just almost guaranteed yourself um the, the grand strat yeah for sure i think so and i think i think i'll, I'll could probably re rename this stand by the shrine because i think that's probably what my boss will be doing rather than chasing the moon he'll just be standing by the shrine for three turns and making sure he ticks that off and then trying to trying to keep himself alive but yeah it's a it, it, it's the stand that one and i think for me in the trog off list beats the ones in the ghb personally can you survive is the critical piece because being under the light three times is no problem. It's yeah. can they survive? And I think, yeah. again, that goes back to the, the uh, four up ward, extra two wounds, getting yep. that trog boss like that, that just, that's why you, what about spiders? Would, would you feel the same way with the spiders um, with chasing the moon? I probably would. Yeah, possibly. I think that you can definitely play into chasing the moon with spiders. Like uh, some of the other, some of the other lists I've wrote, I've, where I've gone for a fungoid general in a trog list, um, so I can lean into the, the double four at bring back with the king's gates. Um, I've get gone for chasing the moon because, for example, he can't be seen outside of twelve, so there's still going to be some stuff that can impact him. But you could give him a five up ward from the artifacts from the new GHB. So those chip damage spells are going to be less impactful. And you can give him the the Gurish Rage one. So on the free up he comes back. Um I do think you can build into Chasing the Moon with those small foot heroes, especially the fungoid. Um Web Spinner Shaman, probably worry about more because you know you can hide them behind the shrine, but there's a lot of stuff these days. It doesn't need line of sight. Loads of people are bringing Ravenax and jaws to try and just 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 blow people off the board um for spiders i'd probably be looking at and squigs i'd, I'd be thinking about things like take what's theirs to be honest because you've got so much movement and you're going to be pushing up high with that movement you've got the ability to deep strike and teleport that i think I, and the, when you think about the bring back as well it's actually quite feasible to think in like squig and spider armies you've probably got more 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 units on the board than what your your opponent has and you can get them in the territory quite easy so i think maybe with those lists i, I might go elsewhere um, but for trogs, it's cer certainly, certainly chasing the moon for me. I'm going I'm to throw something out there, and maybe the internet can tell me in the comment section or even the chat later on. I wonder if there's some crack science with spiders with superior spell flinger. So hear me out. You've got two specific spells, endless spells that are tied to spiders, right? You've got the Arachnorock Cauldron, which is, while it's not specific to spiders, there is a boost to spiders. Um, but also you've got the Scuttle Tide. And yep. uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, if there is a spider fang or an arachnid rock within 12 inches or something to one of those spells, the, sp uh -huh. it, the casting value is like you've got to beat a nine, which That's makes right. it yeah. incredibly hard to unbind. So if you had that little combination going on, might not be so bad. Yeah. It's a thought. Yeah. It's a thought. It's a thought. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's. I, I, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's, it, it, it's certainly one that, especially with the art of the rock player. Actually, that's a good point. I, I just, I just always worry about grand strategies where my opponent can stop them with a roll of a dice. Turn five. That always worries that, me. Whereas yes. If, if, I, if I can control it better, like I feel like I can control chasing the moon with my play. But if my opponent rolls a double six, turn five with a, a yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. yeah. Amazing. And, we've got, we, we, uh, yeah. and we've got new Seraphod coming. Lumineth is currently killing the meta right now. You've got uh yeah. wh why are we not talking squigs? If you look at the episode description, we are talking about primarily spiders and primarily trogs, Dominic. Um yeah. it's not to say squigs don't exist, which we're trying to tackle a book. There is a show two weeks from now where we'll focus on the Moon Clan Grots and the Squig. So that's why we are jumping between the two if you're jumping in late. Um so anyway, anyway, that's the that's the grand strategies. A couple of good options. Um, really think about it. I also agree. I think the endless spell ones are always at risk. It's just that with uh, with fire slays, for example, with the invocation, most people don't have a priest. But it's always dicey that you lose that spell, especially in a, a magic dominated meta. Yeah. Talk to me about that battle tactics. Um, do you like them? All of them? Do you see some that maybe stand out more than others? Yeah. So. Just firstly, very excited to have them. Is is the first thing I'd say. I mean, that 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 is a glow up in itself, and and good to see the Gitz books has fallen more in the realm of like good battle tactics. Because I think we've had some books to come out that have ones that are incredibly easy and are a bit point and click, and then there's some books that have came out where you're like Stormcast, for example, where you just like I'm never going to do any of these. these battle <laughs> I was, tactics. I was yeah. literally about to say that I've I've been playing Stormcast for the, for the last six months preparing yeah. for this book. So I'm like I, I'm not going to touch Gits. I want to like a refresh. Yeah. I don't think I ever used the Stormcast battle tactic once ever no. for six months. No, I, I took them to three tournaments this last JHB and I never did it. I was so determined. There was one that was have a city, have every objective in the opponent's territory contested by cities of Sigma in it. And I had one battle mage on my list and I was so determined one day to get him there to score a battle tactic, but it, it never happened. But I think, I think the Gits ones have fallen in a good place because actually from speaking to some people who have been, like Stuart, Stuart Hodges in the chart has been speaking about some of the experiences he's had with the, and actually a lot of the feedback is actually then they're, they're not that easy. Um, so I, I do think you're going to have to think about the order in which you do them. So like, I, I really like follow the moon. And I think that, that that's one that you can, you can bank on because the, the, the typical swing of a game is that you, you're going to control more than your opponent and they're going to control it more than you. So in, in your turn, you're always going to be aiming to control more objectives than your opponent because of how the point scoring works. Um, and obviously being affected by the light of the bad moon. Well, we've already spoken about this. We've got lots of ways to manipulate that, whether it's scrag grot, the shrine, maybe we're still near the shrine it's rolling that four up so that's one that you can probably reliably do turns two and three i would say probably risky later on when you've got less control of them of the moon but that to me i'm like turns two and three i'm going to pop fold the moon at some point but based on how, how i've used scrag rot um glory grabbers is i think also is is, is a really good one is is solid um at some point you're going to hopefully have rolled a four up bring back maybe you've re-rolled it maybe you've done two four re-roll bring backs um so you're going to hopefully have lots of Moon Clan Lair ability brought back units already on the board. I wouldn't I wouldn't be chancing this one and saying I'm hopefully going to roll a four up and bring it on this turn. I'd probably be looking at units I've already brought back. Unless you're super desperate and you're like, I'm going to chance it and hope I get a four up. But typically, I think you're going to be think, going for the units that you've already summoned. Um, quite, a, quite a straightforward one. Venomous Assault, um, Spider Heavy List, fine. If I'm just running two units of five spider riders, the screens, probably not going to risk this given that it needs the need to go through. You don't know if you go into wards and stuff like that. That's probably one of my least favorites. Um, Stab them in the dark, uh, I like. Um, but again, it, it's another one where I think this is maybe one that I think about going for early. So say say your opponent goes first and you're able to step and impact in turn one. It's quite a nice one to do then before the moon gets in the middle of the board. Um, and then and then similarly, the, the, the Moonlight Raid one, um it, it it's it's that idea of of take like again you're always going to be trying to take objectives off your opponent the object the objective game is always going to swing from your opponent having more um to you having more uh so so i think again that's one you i'd be looking at like turns two three maybe even turn four i maybe even run scrag up behind the unit of six rocker to go and kill something on the objective and and take it back um so so, so big fan Yep. Really quickly as well with that one, um, if you are a trog or a spider person that hasn't looked to the other types of builds, one of the sleeper, well, maybe it's not a sleeper for you, but um, 
stabbers, when they have 20 or more models, can contest objectives outside of nine. So let's say you've got that big mega gargan who's sitting on an objective within three, they're in the center of the board, so at center of the objective, you to, in, in, in order to contest it, you need to be actually on the objective. Wrong. Yeah. With your stabbers, you could be outside of three, yeah. outside of combat, contesting the objective around a mega. So um, that is a great option and something you might want to consider and maybe why you want to bring stabbers as a screen to your trogs or your spiders. Um, as someone said in the chat as well, like Venomous Assault in a very spider-focused list is um, is quite achievable. I do have a burning question for you, Dom, though. This current season, the most easiest battle tactic has disappeared against the odds. We can, they, That's gone. So for a lot of people who are struggling right now, what is that turn one objective? Do you see any, sorry, turn one battle tactic. Do you see any of these battle tactics as your, your turn one choice? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a good question. I, th I think talking more about my list, um, I'm going to be higher drop. So I'm, I'm probably going to be, typically I'm going to be given, I'm going to be chosen to be given the first turn and people are probably going to find it quite straightforward to stay out of my threat range as well when I'm building my Trog Castle essentially. Um, but but I, I think what, what I'm probably going to be going for more will turn one will probably be some of the GHB ones, I think, like like um like sneaky maneuver. I've maybe put Tunnel Master on like one of my wizards, for example, and I've I've, I've pushed him out into one of the center objectives or something like that, and then and then push my screen up with him. Um but you you do have you do have some options here and, and I think Stuart's just touched on it in the chat there, but the ability we've got to control the moon, whether it's through the endless spell, um or whether it's through the through, through Scrag Rot, you, you you might be able to do some of these turn one. But but my my gut tells me that if you're a higher drop and your opponent's giving you the turn, you're probably going to be looking at like your desecrates, um, or like your sneaky maneuvers and, and and those sorts of things. I think these really come into their own turns two to four when the moon's moving and and you're you're in your opponent's face and you're fighting on objectives and you're stealing objectives back. I think we'll have a plethora to do then, which is why I'd feel more comfortable ticking off um sneak maneuver turn one, which is one of the easier ones as GHB and saving saving some of these for later in the game. And yeah, you, if you I was... so big, it's good as well. Actually, the trog one, we should call it out too, because rock guts typically will kill most things they touch, and you can reliably take down the monster. So, so that's a really nice one for trogs. Yeah, I mean, if if it's, it's turn one and I'm given second, and let's say someone's charged me, moved up the field, I think more options start to open up. But yeah. if I'm given the top of turn one where it's uh, I can't regenerate any units, uh, yep. the light of the bad moon hasn't moved yet, uh, like. I th you're right. I, th I think I would probably lead more to the general's handbook right now for turn one. Yeah, yeah, and and no, you've got these good ones later on because one of, one of the difficulties I found last edition with Git was our, I I, I think as, as I'm starting to become more successful with them, one of the biggest drivers was being braver with battle tactics. So like, if an eye for an eye was on, I just I'd chance it and hope I could get it, um, and and and, and save save like against the odds for later. Um, and I think now we can afford to be actually go for the easier ones early because we've now got some book ones that as Gits players we can control with your scrag rots and stuff, um, which is which is really nice. And just to call it out, I wish that was true, my friend, but the first line it says for follow the moon is you cannot pick this tactic yeah. in battle round one. That is the killer. But yes, if that one sentence wasn't there, yeah, a hundred percent follow to moon would be would be my turn one battle tactic. But you can't pick it. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to mention around the grand strats or the battle tactics? Or I think we could go straight to your list. I think I think this has been a yeah, great, rich, rich conversation. Um, we, I, I, had, I had the rules just in case we needed to to look at the rules. But cool. this is your list one. This is your your trog list. Uh, you'll see here, folks. It is a trog boss. It's a general with the loon skin and the glowy it. You've got uh, Scragrot, the Loon King, and the Fungoid Cave Shaman with Moonface, Momet, Itchy Nuisance. And obviously in Season 2, we have the Galatian Champion stuff, and it is fueled by Gurish Rage. Um, you've got two units of six rock, rock Gut Trogoths. Uh, yes, th th that's the time for you to have a sip of water while I'll just go through this. Nice. <laughs> um, your, your 40 Moon Clan Shooters, uh, two units of three Fellwater Trogoths, a Dankhold Trogoth, and a Gobapalooza coming in at 1985. Um, with three battalions, you, you've got the Trog Herd Heavies, Galatian Sharpshooters, and the Battle Reg. 
Cool. Yeah. So, so what what I try to do with with this list really was just to give to give like whether people are like new to AOS or they're like you know seasoned trog players or they're just stepping in the gates. I, I try to come up with a list really that I think gives people like a, a really good like staple to to build around and tweak based on their based on their player style. Um. But the the first thing I'd say is I, I've gone for King Gits, which which I've spoken about. Um, yeah, it is. It is list one of fifty thousand, as this 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 says. But, um, uh, so okay, I, I've gone for King's Gits here, which I which I think I've spoken about enough for me. And I, 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 that ability to reliably bring back a dead unit is is for me big, especially when I look at my Fell Waters, um, and probably more so in this list as well, my Moon Clan shooters who are who are going to be as, both a screen but also a quite good early early on threat piece. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of come on to those those in a moment, but that's why I've gone for the King Gits. Um, ch ch chasing the moon, and um, we've spoken about, which is the, which is I've just gone for a really survivable Dankle Trog boss with the loon skin, um, and so he's so he's he gets to bring and and the spell, which I see someone's asked about. Um, for for me, I'd I'd be taken personally, I'd be taking this the spider one here. So so I'd I'd, I'd be I'd be taking the the spider and the spell essentially. The scuttle the scuttle tide. Exactly the scuttle tide, yeah. Um, and and I'd I'd be using that to just to again. I've talked about the shooters being able to reach out and touch my opponent turn one. I've also now got the ability to just dump an the spell behind my opponent, which can then go. I can deploy Scragra out of range, just prop that up behind them, and go and start getting some mortal wounds and some GCs. Um, and and even if they're a magic dominant army, um, they're going to have to use something to get rid of it. So maybe you've used one of your casts to get rid of it. And if they don't, it's just going to keep running around and just doing that chip damage on the GCs. Um, and the more I've played this GHB, um, I've been. A, couple of tournaments of it already the more i'm seeing the importance of gcs actually um in terms in terms of winning games so if you can start getting rid of those and doing damage on them early um i, I think that's no bad thing so the trog boss is in there as a survivable hero who i know is going to be able to to give the buffs to my rock guts and my fell waters and and, and keep them around and um, we've spoken lots about scrag rock it's going to be running around with a stick taking the moon where i need it um, but also having having some really good spell output. So he's got his War Scroll spell, which means he's got a 24 inch range, where it's equal to the cast and roll every three ups and mortal. Again, a, a, a brilliant GC sniper. Um, but also he's got access to the whole law. <clears throat> so he can be doing my teleport. He can be doing itching nuisance, nick it. Very situational based on what I need. And and controlling that moon, putting it where, where, where I want it when I need it there. Um, he also probably reliably gives me a teleport as well so obviously having having hand of gork from scragrot on a six up i really like that because turn one i'm thinking about putting rend on the shooters from the gobba palooza and then teleporting some shooters into a place where they can they can maybe even shoot a gc off turn one in galatian sharpshooters so effectively it'll be 37 models with two shots each um you know threes and fives minus one rend one damage that they could well lift the gc turn one which pe people won't be expecting that yeah, go on. Sorry. Uh, one one call out maybe to make here, and um, I think I saw Plastic Crack made this uh, really good comment about the shooters, right, is one of the changes with netters is now as long as the unit has one netter in it, the opponent will be minus one to hit, where previously it was like some weird measuring of like every model within yes. two inches of the netter. So yeah. you could build a Moon Clan shooters list with 40, 40 shooters with 39 shooters and one netter and as long as that net is around yeah. yeah you you don't have to take three three in every 10 for the for the shooters so um if you wanted to ramp up that volume that's that's a consideration but you Even might there. be at a tournament with WYSIWYG where yeah i have modeled those netters yeah 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 that's the, yeah exactly and they're like actually you've only got 37 non netters in there but but that, that but that, that, that's what scrag what's in there for and then and then the fungoid like love mama um again can't be shot outside of 12. I've given him fueled by Gervish Rage, so if he does die, I can bring him back. He's probably been spelled off rather than shot off. Um, so it's maybe took my opponent two or three turns to get rid of him, and then he comes back. And it's it's just it's that access to Moonface Moment for the extra minus one save, um, which is which is where I've gone to with that hero build essentially. Um and then and then where the buffs start to come in and where I think this army start start starts to sort of start stacking up, and it, it's how you effectively use the buffs essentially. So so the, the first of all. The idea behind this is that you, you you build a castle, so you've got your moon clan shooters out front. They're your initial screen, and you've got fell waters behind them, and then rockets behind them, and, and that'll change based on the opponent. So if you're against an opponent who doesn't want to fight you, you can actually put the rockets out front because they're not going to come fight you. If you're against an alpha strike like a slaves to darkness, for example, or an iron jaws, you want to put your shooters out front because you want to keep your your hammers alive to be able to hit back. Um, but but where this list actually 
I think can be really impactful is that you can actually get your opponent essentially on minus three to hit if they do come into here because you've got you've got your Gobapalooza spell, which is a holy within 12 bubble, and you can really stretch that out because that bubble comes from the unit. So if you string that unit of five out as a flat unit of five and have one inch between every model, that's quite a big span for a holy within 12 inch bubble. Um, and that spell, every single friendly gets a unit holy within 12, it's minus one to hit. And then somebody charges your, your, your shooters and they're another minus one to hit. And if you've positioned your fell waters properly and they're just behind that unit, they're then minus three to hit. And and people won't be used to going into units on minus three to hit. As I said before, they'll be used to being able to all out attack and be actually plus one to hit. So I think I, I, I think that'll that'll catch a few people out and just make the whole thing um, more survivable as well. And then you, you've you've got your hammers and your two units of six rockets. And and when you start to bring in the rend that's available here, your rockets are minus two anyways. Your mommet can make them minus three. Your gobapalooza can give out minus four. And then if your fell waters go and get their vomit through, it's another minus one, which can't be positively modified. So I think as well, your opponent's getting very few saves in this army because you're running around with minus three, minus five rend everywhere. Can I interrupt you really yeah. quickly? Because I think we've thrown the chat off here and uh, a question came up was, is the rock gut trogoths in the Galatian sharpshooters a mistake? It's not, no. I have got them in Galatian sharpshooters actually. Yeah. And no, no, I, I knew that, but I, I yeah. want you to explain why, because I think a lot of yes. people looked at this and went, why are the fell water not in sharpshooters? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So so the, the reason I went went for the rock guts is essentially, um, yeah, so I think it's just popped up there, but I, I think the rock guts can actually play quite a good role now in in, in sniping GCs. So, so to, to stop a GC being shot at, people obviously need to try and keep them within an inch of a battle line. And, you've, and also people are having to use GCs now to score battle tactics. So people are being forced to put their GCs onto objectives, like whether it's for the GHB battle tactics or like, you know, like going out and stealing an objective early or desecrate lands or the tunnel master in one. And actually there's a lot of situations where you find you're actually not far away from people's GCs now. And the, the range of the rock guts is obviously is nine inches and it's one dice for every model in the unit now. And on a, on a four up, it'll be because it probably won't be a big unit. Um, they'll be taking a mortal wound. But if you spike that and do three or four mortal wounds with each rocket unit, um, or not even a spike, actually, I suppose three mortal wounds is the average from each rocket unit. It's quite feasible to think that you, you could lift the GC, the sudden objective, with two with two units of, of rocket trogoffs, which I prefer to the six inch vomit, which I think is far far easier to screen out. And, and to be honest, I want that that vomit on the un, on units that I want to kill. So I want that minus one save and I want that inability to, to all out defense on that, you know, that 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 screening unit that I want to go kill rather than that GC that if I can snipe them off with some rock guts, um, is it's is just a bonus. So that's so that's sort of the thinking behind that. That is the perfect answer I wanted to articulate because I think people know Fellwater as the shooting unit, but it's a very small and I think Rock guts in the past have I don't I don't know if the war scroll has been rewritten. I can't remember if it's been rewritten or not, but I was always underwhelmed by the rock gut shooting. Now when I look at it, like there's some interesting play. And as we said, we're trying to snipe these these sub sub commander like low wound heroes. Yeah, I don't really want to vomit on them. I want to be able to snipe them off. And between the shooters and the rock gut attacks, and there was a question just talking about the shooters as well, is can the Gobapalooza give the minus one rend ability to missile weapons? The answer is currently yes. So it is just any attacks, both melee and shooting. So um, that's where you get, you know, what, almost 80 shots or like, was it? 78 shots from the moon clan shooters uh hitting on threes if you use all that attack wounding on fives um rend minus one you should put approximately 17 armor saves or approximately again depending on the target yeah. so um that's that, that'll snipe your hero or it'll do some significant damage to whatever you, you, you're shooting at for sure yeah and, and and if you go with the fell waters first if you're going to shoot something that's on an objective if you if you go with the fell waters first, then suddenly the shooters have minus two rend effectively, and your opponent can't all out defense it. So it can get it can get even better if you sequence if you sequence it right as well. Can I just add one more thing as well? Nicholas has made a good comment that maybe a lot of people are thinking as well. You, you wouldn't be the only one, Nicholas. Um, just mentioning about the fact that you have mentioned, you know, a lot of rend or minuses, right? You know, minuses to hit or save and things like that. 
So with our minuses to hit, um, you could be denying people their all out attack. There's obviously other ways to get pluses to hit through heroic actions and other abilities or artifacts. So yes, you can only ever positively or negatively modify a hit or a wound roll of, of, of plus one or minus one, but you can strip back opponents' abilities. So um, that's definitely one I just want to call out because there are a, mo- a lot of minuses to hit in this in this book. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and I think as well the Gobba Palooza one's a spell, so I, I think reliably you can have minus two to hit here, which is typically going to be enough to stop anyone ever getting back on the original hit stat. I mean, someone could take a more scroll or an all-out defense and get back to where they were, but they couldn't. They couldn't get a plus one. But if you if you've got people on minus three to hit, they're gonna. It's impossible for them to get back to even their hit stat. They're going to be at minus one to hit as a max, which which is which is a, it's a good good place to be putting your opponent in. And you know what? If you want to get minus two rend on your shooters, drop a purple sun. Um, yeah. But but a good question that's come up, almost 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 shocked, is uh, from our friend Stu Trog. Is no yeah. Adobe, so no Marsh Crawler, uh, which is the fan favorite best ally for gets. Yeah. So I, I I I think with with this list, I think there's there's so, there's loads you can play around with it, and and as you play more and sort of lean your your player style more. So I think like. I'm I'm expecting to want to have Dobby back in my list now, um, as as he's known, and the Marsh Crawler slug off, um, for for because that plus one to hit bubble is huge because what what it enables you to do, it's not a CP, no one's received the command ability. You can get your whole army hitting on twos, and then you can all out defense, so you can get your rockets more survivable and, and already hitting on twos, for example. Um, so I, you could work him in for like the Dan called Trog off, for example, or you could take out unit three fell waters. Um, and, and work them in that way. Um, so, so I'm expecting what the, the competitive lists that I start to push out. I, th- I think, I think working him in, um, I, I do expect to start to start including him. Um, but for something like this, I, th- I think you can get away now without the because of the rend stacks that you can do. I think you can get away more now without without the plus one to hit because people aren't going to be getting saves. So actually, the number of attacks that you need to get through is is a little bit less. But if I was if I'm writing like a, a probably a more competitive list I'm, I'm going to be putting in putting in dobby yeah yeah i think i i think if i was running your list i'd drop the dank hold trogoth put in the marsh crawler because obviously the yeah. plus one to hit will get around someone who roars at you um yeah. if your dank holds giving the benefit to one rock got unit you can still give the plus one to hit from another one again uh, and if anyone who doesn't who, do, who dobby is it's the marsh crawler from the Auric War Clans book. So it's one of our allies and a very good valued ally. And one of the ways that I'm getting a plus one to hit on my squig herd, even though they can't issue and receive commands. So yeah, um, nice. Yeah. It's 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 a great ally choice. Yeah. And also if you if you put me for the dunk called Trogboss, it brings your points down even more. So again, you've got more of a stab at that um at that triumph. So yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a great. Uh, any other call outs on this particular list? I mean, it's it's solid, right? And you, if you find that you don't get a lot of value from the shooters, you can always put the stabbers on for the similar kind of benefit, but then they can challenge objectives within nine. Um, Gobba Palooza is great. And if it means that you, um, if there's any, uh, obviously you're not trying to stack them, which is awesome. Um, alternatively, you could, obviously, if you wanted to run sneaky snufflers, you could either drop the, the dank hole truck off or, the Gobba Palooza for the five up ward and yeah, like, there's a lot of a lot of flexibility. Exactly, yeah. I think that's what I've gone for. I've done, I've got an iteration of this list as well where I've taken out a unit of fells and the dank hold and put in a put in an um, a unit of boy and grub bounders actually um, to 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 give me an option to, to step out of my castle and go and do some damage somewhere on the board, which I think is maybe where this list um, l- 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 lacks a little bit now. Um, but yeah. Um, it, it, I think what this is is it gives people a good base to build off and pivot and change based on how based on how they want to play. So yeah. Yeah, and we're not saying this is the one true list, folks. If you want to run more fell water, yeah. you want to run you do you. Uh last question on this list before I move to your spidery one is are you worried about the speed in this list? Yeah, I th- I think so. That it's it which which is which is why I probably lean more to bringing in like your boy grots or, or even the unit of squig hoppers because that, yeah, the ability to get out and get onto objectives with spider riders in my last list, and also the ability to just teleport them and dump them back objective as a bit of a throwaway unit, um, was was super helpful. Um, so I I, I do worry this is more this is more of just a moving castle. Um, but I've I've run Slayers this edition so far, and I haven't haven't found the the absence of movement too bad so far on the GHBs. But but I think if 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 you can work in some bounders into this or some um 
awesome, awesome point of reboundness, then yeah, it's helpful to have that extra bit of speed and reach. Would you consider something like um, the Ale Guzzler? And i got to say, that had a glow up being able to charge 3D6. Um, yeah. That is a massive threat piece for like, is it base move of 10 or, or 8? Mm. Then it has a 3D6 charge. Um, that can be brutal. Yeah, I, I ran the Ale Guzzler at the start of the, when I first built my troglist and, and he was great for that, just for that monstrous action. And the, mo the monster battle tactic was still around then. So just having the ability to score, that was something um, w w was, was brilliant as well. It's, it's just, his damage is a bit more reliable too now, because obviously they've mm. brought him in line with the, with the, um, with the, 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 the main crushes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think in terms of speed, I think we've got some units now that can go at pace and do damage. Like squig, a unit of squig hoppers can can put some work in now um, for for 180 points, um, and they can do mortals when they pass over stuff. So if you're pinned in combat, they can help you get out. So I'd I'd be I'd be leaning more towards squigs if I was thinking about a bit, thinking about movement personally. The hoppers would also be a great way because they also do mortal wounds on their retreat. So they could retreat over a Glacian champion and do a bunch of mortal wounds on the way out too. So that's yeah. another way to be okay. sniping them. Would you yeah. consider the new spider riders? So not spider riders, the um the wolf riders, the uh yeah. well, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find the war scroll. Did, yeah, you, the snarl fangs. Yeah, I'm yeah, really the... I'm I'm I feel like they've they've been just over costed. This is this is my and I'm genuinely devastated because that that there's such a good war scroll in there. I, I I used to run Ripper Snarl Fangs in the last edition and and that that six inch pile in ability to effectively have a twenty four inch threat range without having to make a charge um is huge and actually the the redeployability on the Snarl Fangs is really nice because. It, if someone's coming to tour an objective, for example, you could redeploy towards them. And if you get yourself within six, you can then pile into them in the combat phase and they might, maybe they don't want to fight you. And actually a unit of 10 snarl fangs with a gobber palooza buff of minus one suddenly has the same hit stats as a unit of 10 half god berserkers with mm. broad axes. But the problem is they're a five up save and they're 135 points. And I think they're just overpointed. If, if there were 110, I'd be taking them as screens, and I think they'd be a really good screen. But at one three five, um, they're just competing against so much in the book now that it's it's incredibly hard to justify them. Sadly, but too that, too too many points for me now. And that's my problem even with Ripper Snarlfang. I never left home with that Ripper Snarlfang. But yeah. now that the points are similar to stabbers, shooters, as you said, spider riders, a unit of like not Boing Grots because Boing Grots are one eighty, but uh, even like. Uh, the uh, sorry hoppers are 180 boing grots or yeah. whatever um yeah there's too many things that are competing around that price and yeah. it's a bit too and I, I look i look at the damage profile mostly hitting on fours and wounding on fives um yeah they get plus one to hit if they attack something blah 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 but like the damage is not very good i'm paying for speed and i've got other things that have speed so yeah, it, yeah it's probably a, a no from me yeah, the, the the wolves themselves can you can put work in if you get them on if you get the minus one rend and freeze and freeze minus one two or twos and freeze, but it's a it's two hundred and seventy points for block ten and it, they're just gonna die to a stiff breeze. <laughs> so yeah, it's just just too much. And to be honest with you, if I've got Gobba Palooza, I would rather be Gobba Paloozering other things um, yeah. than yeah. than these doggos. But uh, look, here's your second list. This is more of the Grim Scuttle. So we said this is a, a Trogoth and a, um, a Spider Show. Here is our yeah. Spider list. Um, we got the Grim Scuttle on a Giant Spider, which is the General Super Nasty Venom Headdress of Many Eyes. The Web Spinner Shaman with the Totem of the Spider God, a Scuttling Terrors spell, that movement spell, and the Tunnel Master ability. You've also got Scraggy, the uh, Loon King, uh, two units of 10 Spider Riders, two units of 20 Moon Clan Stabbers, two units of Spore Splatter Fanatics, a Skitter Strand, a Ragnarok, and then, of course, no surprise to you, you had to bring in two units of six. Bring in the rock rock. You, ha you had to. Yeah. What, what, what? <laughs> had to Before you get into the list properly, why did you go more of a mixed arms list than go all in on spiders? Was there something that maybe the spider build was lacking? Yeah, I, I thought when when I was when I was thinking about what when I was looking at the spider build, I thought it's it's got a lot of tools. It's got speed. It's got mortal wound output. It's got board control. Um, it's got like and again, it, it's got like it's got re re reliable movement as well. So you know where it's going to be. You can get it in places where you want to be. It's got a deep strike. It's got teleports. But what it lacked a bit for me was survivability. So there's, there's going to be some games where you just want to 
dump and not dump some bodies on the objective and trust that they can be there and survive and get through it. And I think rock guts again on a three up five up it's just, just that's just their war scroll plus the moon of course um but it's just on their war scroll a five up ward so so I, I like the idea of having two two big anvils um that, that, that can do damage as well um obviously less reliable than what there would be in a troglis because you're not going to get the plus one to hit from like the marsh crawler and you're not going to get the extra attack from a dank old trog bus but but they've, they've got enough damage output to get through most things um that has like a, a high a high armor save so they're really there to, to help me dominate objectives while my spiders and can go off with loads of buffs and do loads of mortals and weaken some flanks and really pester my opponent while I just pop my rock guts on the objectives and just control the primary, essentially. Yeah. And obviously, sorry, I was just looking for a rule. Which of the spiders now counts as 10 on an objective? Is it the web spinner Arachnorock? No, it's, yeah, it's the, um, it's the, it's the war party one. It's the, the war party one counts as ten, which is nice um, to, to to pull up. And I, I I probably I would have liked to put a flinger in here. If you go in full spider, I think you probably put a flinger in. Um, yes, because I yeah. do really rate that range of attack. But um, but I've, I've sort of tried to go in for something here that is like a toolbox that has lots of options essentially. Thanks, thanks, team. They've they jumped straight away. War party, war party. And I yeah. think this is this is the benefit, right, of chats like this. You're like, look, uh, you know, Dom, you're obsessed with uh, with rock guards. Your eyes are a little bit too laser focused, but you got enough points there, the 600 points that you could add two additional Ragnaroks, rocks, whether they're warp, warp flinger. Yeah. Um, whether they're another type of build or you could go more spider riders. And I think this is the interesting part, right? Because if you want to tap into the Grim Scuttle, you probably want to get more big spiders in into the mix or you want to get some some good combinations going. Or we could tweak we could tweak this from Grim Scuttle to King's Gits and yep. really reinforce those spider riders, put those 600 extra points into spider riders if we drop the rock guts um, and you just put those waves of spiders out. So... Um, but what I do want to ask is, I guess, two questions. Why the stabbers instead of the shooters? Um, and then, um, as people have already noticed, um, the spore splatters, fanatics are back. Yeah. Why Why would you yeah. include fanatics? Yeah, I thought, I thought, I'd, I thought I'm, I'm a big fan of that unit now, actually, for the for the plus one hit bubble. So the, 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 thought, the thought behind this really was I, I, I was trying to think of ways to, because where I think spiders come into their own is, is there is their ability which i think we've already talked about to, to like to really surround your opponent and, and get in behind them so i was trying to think of ways to force them to come to me and what i like about the stabbers is that i can not step out much and tag objectives from nine inches away as we've already talked about so really spread the length of the board so I, i'm i'm towing the objective on nine and my opponent's having to come even further out if he wants to get a hold of my stabbers and start contesting those objectives um and then and then the idea is as they start to step out, you can then start pushing your spiders around their flanks and getting in behind. And and the fanatics are really there for to to buff two units. Um for, firstly, the rock guts, just to give them that extra attack when they've got less reliability. But most importantly, they're there for the spiders, actually. Um so, so obviously spiders are in in this list are starting to operate a bit like your cruel boys, where they're really they're wanting those fives and sixes to be able to dish out mortal wounds, and and I, I think you sort of with this list you tee up one big round of combat where you get the web spinner shaman in position through tunnel master, and then he's he's got a good twelve inch coverage of all the units who want to go fight, and then you push the spiders in, and you're effectively trying to get them on three or four attacks per model, so suddenly you're doing thirty attacks from or forty attacks from unit of ten spiders, fives doing one mortal. Um, possibly six is doing two, and it, it, it's it's a lot of damage um, to be in mortals to be dishing out. So it's it's got a bit of everything. You've got high rend for things that don't have a great save. You've got mortals for things that have like a three up or a two up save. Um, so it, it, it's a real toolbox, really. Yeah, and this is where you could start tweaking, right? You know, if we again, let's say we drop the the rock guts or leave it some of the rock guts just to add more points somewhere else, you could add a loon boss with the moon clan stabbers, so they do mortal wounds on sixes yeah, yeah. to wound. Yeah, um, yeah. You could get the uh, as we've mentioned the sneaky snufflers or the the. Um, the Gobba Palooza, as an example, um, we've already talked about, you know, potentially bringing in the war party. You know, this is this is just ideas and just how you might want to create. And I guess as we're also settling in this new general's handbook, we'll start to see how many sharpshooters, how many Glacian champions are going to be out there. What are the battle plans that are becoming more popular? But I, I guess it depends really. Do you want to focus on the big spiders or the small spiders? And I think there's pros and cons either way. Um, yeah. Sure, yeah. 
And I think yeah. I think I think the skit strand here is really um is 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 in the why I've probably gone for Grim Scuttle is I like the idea of keeping him and the scuttle boss off for as long as possible. So you you forced your opponent to come towards you to try and take those objectives off your way. You've got a lot of bodies, you've got twenty stabbers on them, and you've got ten spiders. You've you've hopefully done some counter charges with your spiders after they've hit your stabbers. And then you there's there's space to start on top of the back of your opponent's board. So you bring the skitter strand down with the scuttle boss. Um and then just leave him there and then disappear again. And then the scuttle boss can go in and start reaping havoc. He's only been hitting fives or sixes, so you're probably going to have to put quite a bit of resource in to shift him. He's, he's doubling the mortal wounds from his attacks. And then you can bring the skitter strand arc knock down somewhere else again. So I think you can really surround your opponent and give them lots of lots of decisions to make and lots of. It's almost like dispersing the threat, essentially. So they can't just pick one unit and say, I'm going to kill that unit and I've, I've degraded the army. They've got threats everywhere, essentially, to deal with. Yeah, I really like the warp sp- the warp party being able to contest for ten on the objective and some decent yeah, shooting. And sure. we talked earlier, like you, you mentioned right at the start of the show, if you take the warp party, you take the Gobba Palooza to give a minus one rend on the shooting attack. There's some really good combinations. I guess it depends on what flavor you want. Like someone mentioned in the comment, you could just literally put a whole army of spider riders, like 17 units of spider riders. For yeah. some people, they're like, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Some people, it's like, this is my nightmare. Um, <laughs> I mean, in, in King's gets recycling all those wounds, it's a it's it, it's a lot for someone to get through. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's literally why we split up this show because um, this book is deep. We haven't really talked about the grots. We haven't really talked yeah. about the squigs. We haven't talked a lot about some of the other builds. But as you head, I guess you know, let's start wrapping this up. I know it's getting a little bit late for you, and um, I'm starting to lose my voice. I haven't done this in months. What? <laughs> uh, and if there's any key questions in the chat, chuck them in right now uh, before we start wrapping up. But as you start thinking about this current season, um, what's going to be the keys to success for playing Gits? Um, imagine I haven't played Gits before, especially there's probably a lot of people who have picked this book up in excitement or the Christmas box, or they've started because of all the, the meta hype. What's your advice to me? I think, I think the, the, the key thing that I see it's going to be important for Gits in this book is going to be pos- positioning your buffs and, and really learning how to, to, to stay with it within bubbles um, and within range of your buffs, because the more I read this Gits book, the more I feel like what really makes it tick is, is the ability to layer buffs and, and some of those small support characters or, sm- or small units um, is, is what for me really starts to make this book tick. So, so being, being really conscious about and always thinking when you're moving, think, thinking about your next hero phase and saying, right, because you don't want to be moving squig hoppers, for example, if more than three inches away from your squig boss or, or taking them back to trogs. I really don't want to be stepping more than 18 inches away from my trog boss where I can't inspire in presence a unit of fell waters, for example. So, so really thinking about your bubbles and, and staying in range of those bubbles until you're in a place where you can comfortably step out and not be worried about losing the unit, I think is is probably the is most important thing from this Gits book. Um, and, and also, I, I still think being, being able to find ways to protect your GCs, I do think it's going to be crucial for us because there, there is a lot of there's a lot of AO area of effect armies floating around now and there's a lot of people who are finding ways to throw, whether it's your Helon list that's throwing mortal wound bombs through portals, it's your Ravenax jaws are coming up, your, your, your swords are coming up and I think finding ways to reliably protect your foot heroes and, and keep them alive I think is going, to, is, going to be, is going to be crux as well because I think once they start disappearing then the army might start to fall apart a bit so that, that's what i'll be thinking of yeah it's definitely a consideration again why is also like your spiders like 16 wounds so they're quite a generous uh, allocation but then why maybe you want to start thinking about a mixed force you know yeah. i could still run my moon clan but if i had a really tanky hero that um web spinner shaman on arachnorok with its keyword hero um then I've got a tanky mobile hero that can be under, under the light of the bad moon that can be running around, taking damage, doing really good things. And it's a mobile spellcaster where my fungoids, my loon bosses are not so tanky. And it's why currently in this season, which is obviously champion focus, you might want to consider how you do that. Um, I think your, your point is real around um, the buffs is critical. I used to play a lot with a lot of buffs and, you know, you start a hero, start a movement, wholly within 12, partially within 12. It was very much like a Lumineth list, like very, very taxing. 
they've yep. re- they've brought that in line a little bit, which is good as well. So, uh, but do do really think through your decisions, where the moon's going to be, what are the key buffs, and keeping, especially if you go hordes like I do, it's easy to break holy within twelve with a simple pile in, or one model breaks that 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 bubble. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, a couple of burning questions from the chat is, in your opinion from Stu, um, what's the best change in the new book? Um, this is possible. Bi- bias to me would be the plus one save on the drugs, if, if I'm being biased, because go- going from a, and it, it's the ability to be on the four up as your best save, to be on the three up as your best save. I think that I think that's just that's just that's just so big, um. But 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 if I was to say if I was to probably think outside the trogs and 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 t- take my bias off, off, away from it, I, what I'm probably most excited about is the new sub factions. I think I think they they're they're really exciting and there's some really 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 good options in there. Whether it's jaws, whether it's the spider one, whether it's the trog one, um, the four the four reroll. I think that, that there's so much that those sub factions can then just leak into list builds which is why i think we're going to see so many different list builds because of those sub factions so that, that's probably what i'm what i'm most excited about i will say there's two things that we haven't really talked about that i'll i'll give a shout out to is our underworld's war bands uh molog's mega oh, yeah. mob so yeah. molog and even zarbag they both got actually a little glow up that actually makes them worth considering molog doing mortal wounds now on a two plus with the squig bat uh zarbag's gits and zarbag actually has a good spell now that is a bit more generous than his stupid rule um yeah. some of those underworld but they're not too bad yeah i really i really like i really like the um the quick crack loon court one as well actually obviously the the, the newer one it just oh. came into what towards the back end but i mean the the, the fight on the fight on death yeah from him but also the ju- just the unit generally is, is a good little unit like you've got a little a little shot there from the squig hopper and then it's like so, some of them have got some decent output but that the fight on death moon clan one from from grin crack is um is is, re- is really nice if, if you're running moon clan hordes yeah i'm tempted to to bring him do you think there's any losers that you wouldn't take any more from the old book um i, th- I think from from my from my old list, it's actually outside of Gits. This one, Pro- probably I w- won't be taking the Maya Brute anymore. I I used to love him in my list because he would be on twos and rolling ones because he, he he linked with all my buffs. Whereas I think I've actually got better damage output now than what I had from the Maya Brute. And then the other one, I think sadly the Ma- the Mad Cap Shaman, um, he's still only seventy points. So it's like m- maybe you'll still work him in, but for five points less, you can take a Web Spinner. Who's got a five at ward and the fungoid for that twenty points extra um, is is just so much good value now because he can take moment. So I think I think the, my little madcap shaman will sadly be will be will be going away for a bit. That's not the answer I thought you were going to say, uh, and I braced myself for it because I'm currently torn, and that's the loon boss on Mangle Squeak. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, yeah. his price, his price, I don't know if he's worth it. He's like four, almost four hundred points now. Um, and I love the Mangler Squig. I love it to death. And I love the the strike, the fight and, and fight another day. I love the the monstrous rampage. But yeah. for a similar price tag to a Frost Lord on Stonehorn, I don't know if 400 points is the right one. Well, three, 370 currently. I'm like, oh. Yeah, he's a, I, he, he, yeah. He's, 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 de- he's definitely, I, I think, I think he's probably pointing too much, but I, I think if you take him in a Squig heavy list, um that's like hoppers and bounders i think the opportunity to have that one round of combat where everything goes in and everything's wounded on twos um is 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 still pretty powerful but i think where he maybe loses out though is the new the new squig boss actually maybe you don't care that much about wounding on twos because you're doing mortals on sixes to hit and wounds if if you build it right so um i don't think we'll see the loon boss on manga squig i even think the manga squig on his own is maybe a little over costed at 260 just because he's not he can't buff himself and and they're just fighting with such good points in the book now that I think they're going to struggle to get in over like a unit of 10 bond grab bounders, for example, who is just yeah. more wounds can rally. So I'm a, I'm about to submit a squeak list tonight and I've got a mangler and I'm like, oh, do I drop the mangler? Like I, I want to run him and I feel like yeah. I want to test him, but yeah. I'm like 400 points is not a valuable investment. But speaking of investments, do you think um, other armies are going to use Gits as allies? The most popular one used to be the fungoid cave shaman. Now, yeah, the, the double spell cast once per game mushroom is now locked to Gitsy. So you can't use that. 
but he yeah. can still generate CP. Do you see the fungoid in any other units being brought in? I, th I think the fungoid will be will be used um, less than what he was before because of the double cast. He's, you still can't see him outside of 12, but I think people will be disappointed with the four wards going away um, because people will be able to snipe him with spells and stuff, which are quite prominent. I think Scr I think Scragrot is going to pop up in lists because of his because of his spell. Um, that he's got because actually it's quite good and he, he's still a two cast wizard that has plus one to cast and, and plus one to dispel and he, for 160 points I think some people might look at him I can't remember if his free CP is boom spike key, gets keyword locked I don't uh, he, he, he does he does oh yeah good yeah, keep, keep going I'll, I'll, have, I'll, I'll have a look yeah I think he gets a once a game free CP as well um but I I, I, th I think people might might think about putting him in um as well. And then also F F fell waters as well. I think w would not be a bad ally into 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 some armies. So a unit of three fell waters, or even a block of six, that can give your entire army an extra minus one rend and stop your opponent from being from all out defensing. Um, I, f I think I think we'll see some fell waters cropping up. Maybe maybe in, maybe in Iron Jaws and the likes. The uh, the issuing of command is not locked to git, so he can you do it once per turn. Um, which is powerful. He's also a double caster, which um, is quite attractive. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and obviously he's got a four-up ward. He gets plus one to casting and unbinding. So I feel like he might go up in points, um, yeah. but he could be a good ally. I think um, Stabbers could be another popular ally as well, given uh, one, to cheap screen, 20 wounds, uh, minus one to hit, but two, yeah. obviously the, the objective contesting within nine. So I could see that possibly as a popular choice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, because that's on the wall scroll, isn't it? The nine inch, the nine inch contest. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. Pe people who maybe struggle to contest the primaries might be tempted with, with stabbers, actually. Yeah. Even fell water, fell waters are a good choice. I think there's a yeah. lot of good ally choices if you have access to git. So, um, cool. I think. Is there anything else you want to add? I mean, I could ask you a million questions. This is a git show. I'm a git. I'm a git player. I'm with a <laughs> brethren. Um, is no, there anything you want to? No, I'm I'm happy. No, yeah, it's been it's it's been a good chat. It's been good, probably getting stuck into the book actually, and especially talking about trogs and trogs and, and spiders, of course. So yeah, it's been good. All right, let me ask you one final question before we wrap it up, Dom. If you could add one more unit to this this army, there's something that's brand new or brought yeah. back to life. What would you bring to the army? I, I would love a chariot that did mortals on the charge. <laughs> that that is what I'm itching for. Having have, have run run the storm strike chariot in in stormcast and just like like if you use chariots effectively in this in this game and generally they're just the most fun. I think a chariot of any form, whether it's you know pulling, whether it's two trogs pulling it, which is probably a pipe dream, probably more like wolves. But um, but yeah, I, I would love to have I'd love to have some fast moving chariots that can like pin and do mortals on the charge that's what i'd love to see like grom the punch yeah exactly yeah bring yeah grom. exactly bring bring that back out <laughs> yeah here's my wish uh games workshop please listen to me please please bring the colossal squig the squig yeah. gobber the troll hag bring them into the range officially put them in the battle tome i love my trogoth princess i have two colossal squigs i love my squig gobber let me run my Forge World models and just put yeah. them in the book. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love the Trogoth Hag to be fair. I, I, I bought and painted her, and she's never seen the tabletop yet, sadly. So she's she's waiting, waiting for a moment. <laughs> so she's so, so good. I I, I, yeah. I used to run her as that durable hero in my Moon Clan. Dom, yeah. if people want to chat to you more, I know you're on Twitter, and your Twitter handle is in your uh, name just here. But is there anyone to shout out any games clubs anywhere that people want to chat to you, maybe find you in the community? Yeah, so so I I I shout shout out my teammates first of all in a nine inch fail. So so a, a, a group of friends really as, as as well as teammates. But we'll, we'll go to a lot of lot of tournaments together. And if you if you ever see us there, um, please please come along and say hi. And then I, I actually head up the London Wargamer uh, Guild, which is which is the London the London based AOS community. Essentially, we've we've got over two hundred and fifty members now. Um, so, so anyone in or around London who's looking to get into AOS or plays AOS all the time, or is even just passing by, um, then, then, then please just, just, just hit me up on um, on Twitter, and I can, I can get you, get you out of that group. But I'll shout out all the LWG guys as well. 
Awesome. Now, this has been an incredible show. You have been on my name, my list for months. And as soon as Gitz got that book, I had you lined up. I wanted to chat with you. And um, this has been awesome. Um, I can't wait to hear how your your list evolutions uh, occur and how we settle into the new GHB. And what look, I'm just really happy that Gitz finally has an updated book. They have battle tactics. The book was done well. Um, I think there's going to be point increases. I think we we definitely got a little bit cheeky when it comes to discounts, but enjoy it while it lasts. And um, I think we deserve it, man. 18 months of just being at the bottom. We deserve yeah. it. Give us our give us our time in the sun. It's time, yeah. I think it's time. It's it, it it's the bad moon shines bright. I think, and it's it's time for all the all the gets players to start flooding the tables again. I'm excited to see it. Oh, you, you watch it. We're going to get yeah. banned with Squeak Herd. <laughs> yeah. He's going to get banned. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. <laughs> oh, we, we we deserve it. Just don't spam, yeah. kids. Let's just hold it for as long as we can. Dom, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you, everyone who watched the stream, either live or on replay. You know the deal. Like, subscribe. Thank you to all the patrons. And um, I will chat to you all again soon. Oh, and the, and the other show, the... um the gits and the, sorry, the the moon clan and the squig one will be it's like two weeks from now so it's already scheduled stay tuned you'll get a different view on the book dom thank you so much and uh let's end the show thanks all thanks thanks for hanging around until the end i hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas now if you did i would love it if you press like on the video as well as left me a comment with your thoughts the conversation will continue over on discord and the link is down below in the episode description I also want to give a massive shout out to the AOS Coach patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you are all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a double one on a spell cast.